San Francisco. A beautiful, sunshiny afternoon, and the 49ers taking a record of 1-7 and seven against the Chicago Bears, who have won three while losing five. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. This, of course, is Johnny Morris. A week ago in Minnesota, heartbreak for the Bears. A 10-point fourth quarter lead down the drain, and in the last 13 seconds, the Vikings scored and beat them 30-27. to 27. If there was one bright spot, however, it had to be the quarterbacking of Mike Phipps. Yes, Bob. Phipps came in in the second half, due for over 200 yards, as the Bears wound up with 496 yards on offense. That's the most since 1965. When you were a Bear. That's a long time ago, too. And Mike Phipps is going to try and do the same thing. He buried his attack. We'll see if the Bears do that again today. On the other hand, the 49ers had to wait eight games before they got their first victory a week ago against Atlanta. And yet, despite losing their first seven straight, they've shown that they can move the ball with a much improved quarterbacking situation in Steve DeBerg. Steve DeBerg is coming off a terrible year last year, as you know, but Bill Walsh, the new coach, has worked with him. And San Francisco, despite that 1-7 record, can move the football. So we might have an exciting game here, Bob, as they get ready for the kickoff. The Bears have won the toss. Oddly enough, Chicago has won seven of nine coin flips so far this season, and they'll be receiving here as Ray Wershing kicks off. Brian Bashnagel, the deep man, chases this one toward the back of the end zone and says, I'll stay right here. The Bears will go with the touchback and set up at the 20-yard line. It is absolutely a beautiful day here in San Francisco, about 60 degrees. There's a slight wind, a wind against the Bears in this first quarter, but it is just spectacular. A lot of Chicago people wish they were in San Francisco today. Look at the Bear offensive line. Everybody is healthy, and it's one of the NFC's best groups. Scott Bashnagel and tight end Mike Cobb are the targets for Mike Phipps, who has won five out of six games dating back to a couple of years ago for the Bears as a starter. His running backs are Walter Payton and Dave Williams, the former 49er. And Payton carries on first down and gets about five before being shoved back. Ron Schumann, the second-year man out of Wichita State, who is back after an injury and starting at middle linebacker, made the stop. There's their front four. Dwayne Board starting in place of the injured veteran, Cedric Hartman. He has a pinched nerve in his neck. Reese, Vincent, and Webb, the rest of the group. Scott Hilton moves from middle linebacker to the left side. The veteran Willie Harper on the right, Schumann in the middle. And a look at the 49ers secondary, which has been the cause of some problems. They are second to last in the NFL in overall pass defense. Second down, we'll call it five. You've got to watch for Peyton throwing the ball on this play. He slides off a couple of tackles and gets close to a first down at the 30-yard line. A week ago, Peyton threw 54 yards for a touchdown to Brian Bashnagel on a halfback option. As a matter of fact, he ran for a touchdown, caught a pass for one, and threw for one last week. First time anybody has done that in the NFL since Harmon Wages did it for Atlanta 10 years ago. And it certainly should help uh, Walters in runs, as we saw that time. Actually, that last time, Peyton just did a good job of getting some extra yards because Tim Gray came up and uh, jammed it up. But uh, everybody's going to be looking for Walter Peyton on that end run to throw another pass. We'll see how many games it is before he does throw another one. Maybe today. He got the ball across the 30 for the first down. Clock is moving. 13-30 to play in quarter number one. And Phipps will put it in the air for the first time. He threw for 200 yards in the second half last week against Minnesota. And he's got his tight end, Greg Latta, on the play. Tim Gray, the strong safety, made the stop. That's been a favorite play for the Chicago Bears as a tight end will come from the left side and come over to the right. More importantly, the Chicago Bears have thrown on first down as pretty good pass blocking. And here he comes across and finally brought down. But the Bears have thrown on first down. Good hit by two 49ers, as Bob mentioned. They picked up about four, bringing up second down, and we'll call it six. Bashnagel is wide right. James Scott is wide to the left. Phipps completed 10 of 16 for 200 yards last week against Minnesota. Big hole for Walter Payton. And it appears that he has a first down. Walter got 111 last week in the loss to Minnesota and went by Ken Willard and Lawrence McCutcheon into 13th place on the all-time NFL rushing list, and this after only five years in the league. If he gets 64 yards today, he'll pass Don Perkins and go into 12th. And then there's uh, John Riggins in there, too. Of course, he's still playing, and he may uh, be a factor in those top 12. But let's take a look at the measurement as the Bears gain a first down, and that was a big hole. The lead back, Dave Williams, went through there first, and there was still nobody around by the time Peyton got there. And if that continues, you're going to see Chicago moving up and down the field. But I expect that from San Francisco, too, because 
Bill Walsh is a really a great offensive mind, the new coach of the 49ers, and that one and second seven record is deceptive. He's scored a lot, they've moved the ball, but their defense has been so, so poor so far this year until the last game against Atlanta. The Bears will shuttle the plays in and out to fix by use of the tight ends. Greg Lotta is in there now in place of Mike Cobb. Lotta number 88 on the right side. Fips with a long count and a quick drop. Time to throw down the right sideline. Almost a one-hand grab by Brian Bashnagel. Tim Gray was there to put some pressure on it. Well, there is another first down pass by the Chicago Bears, and we've seen a really a change in trend for the Bears, throwing on first down, which they did very little over the past two years. And Mike Phipps, the quarterback, says he's excited. He got excited about the game plan last week, and he's excited about this one because they're going to do a lot of things. I guess maybe a quarterback, they used to run and run and run. Maybe the quarterback got bored with it, as Don Pearson in the Chicago Tribune wrote this morning. Maybe a quarterback can get bored with the game plan. The stats on 31-year-old Mike Phipps in his 10th year out of Purdue, most of his career, of course, with the Cleveland Browns. The Browns traded Paul Warfield to Miami to get the first-round choice they used to select Phipps in 1970. Off the hands of a leaping James Scott. Not a bad throw by Phipps. Tony Dungy, the former Steeler, the starting free safety for the 49ers, hit Scott as the ball arrived. Yes, and you'll see the timing was slightly off in this play. If he'd have thrown a little bit sooner, Scott would have, would have made the, the grab. But uh, pass blocking has held up. Nobody anywhere near Phipps. And, of course, the hit comes in just as he goes up to the ball, which was a little bit high. Tony Dungy does what he's supposed to do, hit that receiver, and he hit him in the air and made sure that James Scott was not going to catch the ball. We've got a flag on the play, and it looks like the Bears might have been holding. Holding number 64, offense. Ted Albrecht, who has had an exceptional year for Chicago, has played well. Grades out very well, week in and week out for Chicago, but that time they got called for holding. The 49ers take the penalty, which brings up second down and 20. The ball back at the 31-yard line. You heard the voice of referee Jerry Seaman making the call against the Bears. Phipps gives to Peyton. Hole opening up for him on the left side. He gets around linebacker Bob Martin, scoots down the sidelines, and that's James Owens, who is seeing some action today at free safety, who forced him out. Owens, an interesting situation for the 49ers, rookie out of UCLA, first player taken in the second round of this past year's NFL draft. They had planned to use him at wide receiver, but they have had so many difficulties in their secondary that they've switched him over to defense. They have had over 30 defensive backs come through this team since the training camp began, and none of the starters from last year are here, so you can see. In fact, this San Francisco team is playing with 25 free agents. In other words, players who were dropped by other teams. Peyton got 17 on that carry. It's third down and three. The ball at the 48-yard line of Chicago. Fifth will throw for it. His line gives him time. And a first reception by Bashnagel in San Francisco territory at the 39-yard line. Another very nice precision pass by the Chicago Bears. They doubled Scott on the other side, so Bashnagel went straight down the field and did the deep comeback out, and the pass was there, bringing him back towards the sideline, and there was nothing that Charles Cornelius could do about that. If the Bears do that kind of thing, nobody can stop them. They got 14 on the play and some strong pass blocking by Dan Neal and Reby Sorry helped Phipps. One of the problems for the 49er defense this year has been lack of pressure on the passes. Interesting contrast in that offensively, they are number one in the NFC with the pass. Defensively, they are second to last in that category against the pass. Middle linebacker Ron Schumann tackles Peyton on the first down carry. There is Walter Peyton, a sweetness. Cutting back here behind number 30, Tim Gray. Schumann finally makes the tackle. The guy they're going to have to get as far as the Chicago is concerned, is Tim Gray, because he comes across that line of scrimmage to try and turn Walter Payton back in, so they're going to have to have pursuit. Second down and five. The Bears have had the ball since the opening kickoff. We move inside, ten and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Phipps going with a lot of long counts. Dave Williams fumbled the football as he was hit, and it's still lying there loose before Phipps solidly dives on it. I think that ball sat there for five seconds before anybody spotted it. However, there was a penalty on the play. This was the first time all afternoon that Williams has handled the ball, and he didn't handle it very well. And the ball goes down on the ground. Jimmy Webb was sitting down, and he couldn't get up. He couldn't bend over and get it in time as Phipps came in to make the recovery. But uh, I thought San Francisco was offside on that play. 
And they do pace it off. Offside, number 76, defense. Dwayne Board, a rookie out of North Carolina A&T, who is starting today in place of the veteran Cedric Hartman. There he is, number 76. He jumped offside. And that gives them first and 10 at the 28. Good sustained drive by the Bears at the outset of the game. Already five minutes gone in this game. Peyton lining up in the eye behind Dave Williams. Peyton's second man through gets the first down call. You're going to see some good blocking in the line by the Bears. Dan Neal, number 52, 52 throws a good block. And the entire left side of the Bear line, there you can see Ted Albrecht just pushing. Oh, look at that. Down goes Dwayne Board as Ted Albrecht was rather rude with him. Dan Neal, number 52, also threw a good block. And Walter got five more to bring up second down and five. That really opens up the options for the offense when you can consistently pick up first down yardage like that. Phipps is going to throw on second down over the middle and complete to his tight end, Lotta, who's quickly driven back by left side linebacker Scott Hilton. Hilton is quite a story. 6'4", 225 pounds. He's 28 years old, no college experience, played minor league ball in the Pittsburgh area, and finally was picked up as a free agent by the 49ers, and he's performed extremely well for them. Yes, he has, and uh, the Bears have thrown that tight end pass, him coming across the line of scrimmage several times over the past few games. They've got to be careful. They could go to the well a little too often on that play. Third and one from the 19. Exactly nine minutes to play in the first quarter. Dave Williams, close to the first down. Gerard Williams, the cornerback, number 29 for San Francisco, clapping his hands in anticipation of a change of possession as he thinks the 49ers have stopped them. They may call for a measure. Jerry Seaman wants them to measure. I think it's a little bit short. So the, the Bears will be faced with a situation of the going for the field goal or trying to plunge over to continue this drive. I think it's about three inches, four inches short. And you are right. What would you do? Well, I'm not the coach, but if I had a drive that was going for seven minutes and I was that close to the first down, the way they've been running the ball, I think I would try and continue the drive. You're three and five. What the heck? And Neil Armstrong with James Scott just walking in front of him. Armstrong, the red sweatered man standing closest to Scott, agrees with Johnny Morris, and they will go for it. They bring in Robin Earl, the big back, 6'5", 240, third-year man out of Washington, in fourth and about a foot. Phipps keeps it, follows a block, Earl, and appears to have the first down. Yes, he got it. Tim Gray, the strong safety, dove over the top trying to push him back, but not in time. That's Gray number 30, peeling himself up off the pile. Almost seven minutes gone in this drive. If they keep up going like this, chipping down the field, they're liable to eat up the whole first quarter on one drive. Jerry Seaman says he wants to take a look at it again, but it appears from here as though they do have it. Last year, the 49ers and Bears met in the second week of the season, and it is another Chicago first down. And the Bears won that game 16 to 13. These two teams have played several times since 1950. Each team has won 21. They're 21, 21, and one tie. How even can you get as you look at Bill Walsh, the new San Francisco 49er coach? He came here heralded as an offensive genius, and he has really revitalized the 49er attack. Their defense remains the problem, however. They've scored plenty of points, but they've yielded even more. Fits back to throw on first down. He wants it all, and it's over the outstretched hand of Brian Bashnagel and incomplete. Charles Cornelius on the cover. This telecast presented by authority of the NFL, and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers and the National Football League is prohibited. Actually, Bashnagel had a step on Cornelius to the inside. If Phipps could have put it down and more to the inside, they might have had a touchdown. You saw Greg Lotta, the tight end, number 88, come in with the play for Phipps on second and ten with 8.05 to play in the first period. Williams and Peyton in a shift. 
the pick oh. to Walden. It opens up for him around the left side. He moves inside the 10-yard line before being shoved out. Oh, they went to the I formation and a great block by Dave Williams, the remaining back, as he got Dwayne Board. Watch number 22. That was the key to this play. Here he is. He dumps Board. Down he goes. Peyton gets to the outside. The old one-handed carry. And finally knocked out of the bounds. And a little gymnastics move afterwards as Peyton comes up over his head. What do you call it? When you're laying down over the top of your head and stand up? I don't know. I wish that Dr. Gomez an answer. I honestly don't know. New Orleans upsets Washington. Peyton, the second man behind Williams. They give it to Walden. He's three yards. He is close to it. And we may see the chains again. Dwayne Board made the tackle. They call a timeout and they want to measure. It's going to be very, very close this time. But it appears that he might have it, depending on where they spot the ball. He's got it by an inch. Johnny Morris says he's got it by an inch. Jerry Seaman isn't quite so sure. And we'll have our third measurement of the past couple of minutes. Clock is stopped with 7.49 to play in the first quarter, and the Bears have had the ball since the opening kickoff. Whoa. Short by about an inch. <laughs> oh, well, you can't win them all. beats Detroit 20 to 17. Detroit is now one and eight for the year. After that great finish last year, of course, the quarterbacks went down and so did the season for the Lions. Buffalo with the victory is four and five. Fourth and exactly that, only a few inches. They go for it again. Last time they were successful with Fitz keeping the ball. It's at the seven now. And the clock is moving inside seven quarters. Fitz again keeps it and again appears to have it. They stop the clock once again and again they will measure. Ted Vincent made the tackle. Vincent 6'4", 265, a second year man out of Wichita State. Vincent Webb, Archie Reese, and Dwayne Board, the front four for Bill Walsh and the San Francisco 49ers. There's only seven minutes and 28 seconds left in the first quarter, and if you have to say a game plan is going according to Hoyle, that's it, because Neil Armstrong, now discussing with Ken Meyer upstairs on what play to call, uh, has not allowed San Francisco to have the hands on the ball yet. You can't score if you haven't got the ball. It's first and goal at the six. Walter Payton, by the way, has carried eight times in this drive, unofficially for 53 yards. And on three first down situations, they have thrown. So they have thrown on first down more than they have run on first down in this first drive. The Bears have recorded six first downs on this drive. First and goal from the six. The pitch back to Payton. Oh. Payton to the five. And to the goal line for the touchdown. Walter Payton with his 50th touchdown rushing. And that breaks a bear record. Breaks an old record held by Rick Caceres as we look at it. Dave Williams, number 22, is out front. Hooks the linebacker, Harper, inside. Dungy's the one who misses the tackle there as Peyton cut back inside of Dungy and went in for the touchdown. The Chicago Bears are on the board. 59 of the 80 yards they accumulated on that opening drive accounted for by Walter Peyton, the last six on this touchdown run. The 50th touchdown run of Walter's career. Peyton came into the game with 838 yards rushing. So he is already approaching the 900 mark for the season. Bob Thomas adds the extra point out of the hold of Brian Mashnagel. And after holding the ball for 7 minutes and 59 seconds, the Bears score with 7.01 to play in the first quarter. They lead it 7-zip. This is the end.
end of what you call your basic ball control drive, the 19th play of an 80-yard march. And San Francisco's going to have to change some defenses there to the weak side. The Bears off that eye formation are sending Peyton to the weak side, and they just haven't got enough people out there to stop them. So San Francisco oh, may have to make some Elliott, adjustments. Our deep Perrin will kick. Lonnie Perrin is going to be the kickoff man, and Lenville Elliott and James Owens, Elliott 35 and Owens 20, are waiting at the San Francisco goal line. And there's Perrin, number 25. As he puts the ball down on real grass, last year this was an artificial surface as you look at the Bears' scoring drive. 19 plays, 80 yards, time of possession, 7.59. So they have the real grass now, and I noticed I was down on the field before the game. It's rather long. I don't know if that was intentional, and I don't know if there's any league rules, but uh, I'm sure they're trying to slow Walter Payton down on the track, and uh, they didn't in that first drive. Lonnie Perrin's only been with the club a couple of weeks. Picked up as a free agent. Bob Thomas is the placement man, but Perrin a bit longer off the tee, at least they think so, certainly not this time, as Elliott comes up to the 15-yard line to take it and brings it out almost to the 35. At about the 33-yard line, he's brought down. Reasonably good field position for the 49ers. Mark Merrill, number 50, made the tackle for the Bears. Now we get a chance to look at San Francisco's offense. It's been a good one this year, despite the 1-7 and seven record. You see the offensive line, which is blocked very well so far this year. They've only had 12 sacks, despite the fact that they've thrown the ball a lot. There's their receivers. Freddie Solomon had an end around last week that was good for a, a touchdown. Ken McAfee, and of course, there are the running backs. Paul Hofer starting in place of O.J. Simpson. And this is the first time in O.J.'s career, when he has been healthy, that he has not started a game for either the Bills or the 49ers. DeBerg hit as he releases, and everything's going right for the Bears. The interception is made by Jerry Muckensturm, and then he laterals back to Gary Campbell. The Bears take the ball back after only one play. They had it for 19 themselves. San Francisco got to keep it for one. They put pressure on DeBerg, hit him as he threw, and Muckensturm picked it off. Let's take a look at first play of the game for San Francisco as Alan Page gets a jolt on him, and there's the interception by Muckensturm, and he has the presence of mind to lateral to Gary Campbell, and Campbell takes it a few extra yards, and that was disaster for San Francisco as we look at it once again. Alan Page, number 82, the marathon man, gets through, and there he is. Jolts him just as he throws the ball, and it went up like a wounded duck, and there is Muckensturm saying, I got it, I got it, but I don't want it. I'll give it to you, Gary. You take it. And now the Bears have it. The 13th interception that DeBerg has thrown this year. Phipps wants a quick break oh. on first down. Fires down the right side. Oh. Interception by Gerard Williams. Williams, who made a game-saving interception a week ago against Atlanta, thwarting the last Falcon drive, picks off his third of the season. There it was a pass for James Scott, but he was surrounded by three players, and it looked like they had a little confusion there. Scott was open deep and had to come back and go to his pattern. We'll be back in just a moment. The 49ers secondary has only four interceptions this year, and Gerard Williams has three of them. This was a case where Phipps waited, and he came back into the coverage. You can see there's Williams making a great, great play to make the interception. Ted Vincent put some pressure on that play against Mike Fish, and that's the first time all afternoon that the 49ers showed any evidence of a pass rush. On first down, Jim Osborne mixing it up with the Falcon ball carrier. Gary Fensick and Doug Plank arrived late, at least according to some San Francisco fans, to apply some extra taps. Hampton, Osborne, Page, and Hartenstein, the defensive line for Chicago. Muckenstern, who had the interception a moment ago, hits in the middle, and Campbell on the right side, their linebacking core. Schmidt and Livers, the corners, Fensick and Plank, the safeties. They got three on the play at second down and seven. In motion is tight end Ken McAfee, and carrying the ball is Paul Hofer on second down. Hofer had a big game a week ago in the win against the Falcons. 84 yards in pass receptions, he caught seven of them. And that accounts for his starting today ahead of O.J. Well, he's caught 16 passes in the last two games, and I imagine he's got to be a little bit excited. This is the first time that, I think, as you mentioned, O.J. hasn't started a game when he, uh, unless he was injured. And to be, to have the thrill of, of starting ahead of uh, somebody like O.J. Simpson has got to be uh, exciting to him. There's Hofer, an 11th round draft choice out of Old Miss four years ago. Third down and four. Motion along the bare line. Flags 
flying all over the place. The bird goes through with the play. It's broken up by Doug Plank. And now we'll have to see what the flags are all about. They're going to call the Bears, I believe, for offsides unless somebody ruled or deemed that they were drawn offside. That's going to give San Francisco their first first down of the game with 5.04 to play in the first quarter. to share that penalty. Mike Hartenstein jumped off sides. They're in overtime. The Jets and Houston tied at 24. DeBerg with a play action fate to Jackson. And then a little lob out to Wilbur in the flat. He eludes the tackle by Wilbur. Oh, breaks another one. And he's down the sideline into Chicago territory. Gary Fensick finally stopped him. This is what San Francisco likes to do. There's DeBerg. He has three receivers in the line of sight down there, and he takes the short man. And there he goes. Wilbur down the sidelines. You can see him collide with number 54, Tom Hicks, and he'll bust the tackle by Hicks and then continue on down the sideline before Gary Fensick knocks him out of bounds. And that was a first down pass for San Francisco. Bill Walsh believes in it also. The play went for 23. 4.55 to play in the period. First and 10 from the 40 of Chicago. The 49ers trail at 7 to nothing. And they keep it on the ground on first down. With Wilbur Jackson carrying. Jackson has gained only 195 yards rushing coming into the game this afternoon. Simpson is their top man with 346. So their rushing attack has not been all that impressive. Ray Wershing warms up on the sidelines in anticipation of a possible 49er field goal attempt. Well, he sure couldn't be warming up because it's cold, because it's nice and warm, but I guess he wants to get that timing down. Jackson got three on first down, second down and seven. DeBerg back to pass. Oh, he's on him, he gets through. A man open, incomplete. Mike Schumann was open, the pass a bit too high. A little bit too high and a little bit behind him. The Bears are shifting their defensive uh, front line alignment quite a bit uh, into a lot of odd defenses with a man over the center. That last time they shifted at the last moment into an even four-man front. So they're trying to confuse the Bird, who is a young quarterback, and uh, confuse the offensive line of San Francisco as you look at the Bears' sideline. Doug Buffone, number 55, who had a couple of interceptions uh, two weeks ago. The Bears bring Wentford Gaines into the game on a passing situation, third down and seven as they go with the nickel defense. Gaines the fifth defensive back. DeBerg with time. Did he catch it inbounds? Freddie Solomon with the grab. And they say it is a good catch. Freddie Solomon entered the game with 38 receptions, only two behind Raymond Chester for the NFL lead. And Chester of Oakland has played one more game than Solomon because the Raiders played on Thursday night. Good pass protection and good timing on a precision pass down the field. He came back out, and there is the foot down inside that white line, and that is a completion. Perfect play. Solomon, the former Miami Dolphin, is averaging more than 15 yards per reception, and he has caught four touchdown passes this year from Steve DeBerg. That play good for 12 yards. From the 25, they have another first down with 4.08 to play in the quarter. Hofer gets the call. Oh, he's off the tackle, slides to the left, and then slips down himself at about the 19. Virgil Livers will get credit for the tackle against Hofer, who scored twice last week in the 49ers' first win of the season as they beat Atlanta. And that's his strong point. He's not the fastest running back in the world, but he can bust tackles, find the hole, and that time was good individual effort as he broke away right there off of Allen Page and then dipped to the outside and slipped as Livers made the tackle. He got six at second and four. The clock is moving. We're down to 335. The Bears lead it seven to nothing. From the 19-yard line, Hofer again. And he breaks another tackle as he shirts Gary Campbell off and moved down near the 15, and that's going to be close to a first down. The Chicago Bears had the right defense that time as Campbell put it, came in to fill the gap there, and he was wide open, and there's the contact. He missed the tackle, hung on to the pants, but couldn't quite keep a hanging on as Hofer did a great job of driving for the first down. Paul Hofer getting the start, and so far bringing his way 
18 rushes for 78 yards and a 4.3 average in 1979. Of course, he was injured there. He's had some hamstring problems early in the season. Took a shot on the small of the back, and he goes out at least temporarily, and O.J. Simpson makes his first appearance of the afternoon. A quick look at O.J. In motion, wide receiver Mike Schumann. DeBerg with a first down pass. Pressure on, and Alan Page was there. A flag flies, and the ball drops harmlessly and incomplete. Page and Osborne both there to force DeBerg into a quick release. Well, from where the area was, it looked like they may have a holding penalty against the 49ers offensive line, but we'll see here. Holding, number 68, offense, offside, defense, offsetting penalty. John Ayers was holding on the play for the 49ers, but the Bears, as you heard Jerry Seaman say, were offside, and we'll do the play over again. That has to end up as being a break for San Francisco. You see Jim Osborne, number 68, putting good pressure. The holding with there, you can see over on the side, number uh, 68 was called for holding Allen Page. That's Ayers. So it's first and 10 all over again from the 15-yard line with 2.56 to play in the first period. Solomon wide left, Schumann is wide right, Schumann coming in motion toward the line of scrimmage, and DeBerg back to pass. He's open. Out of the hands of Phil Francis. Francis had six points staring him in the face and dropped it. Okay, here comes the pass rush. Plenty of time for DeBerg to throw. Plenty of time. Hampton comes too late, and there is the ball right in. Boy, that hit him right on the front of the shoulder pads, and some, sometimes that ball gets up a little high, and it'll deflect out, but that's uh, bad news for San Francisco. That was a touchdown. It's second and ten from the 15, and the Bears still have their 7-0 lead. Both wide receivers on the left side, Schumann and Solomon. All kinds of motion, flags are flying, and they won't get the playoff. They say, hold on. Looks like illegal procedure coming up here against San Francisco as Ron Singleton jumped off. False start, number 67, offense. That's what it is. There's Singleton, third-year man, Grambling product. The offensive line of San Francisco has performed very well. One of their bright spots this season. And one of the reasons that the uh, they've had some success on their passing game, aside from the way they run it, they have DeBerg drop shorter than normal, maybe the quick five steps, which makes it more difficult, and they get the pass off before he can be sacked. And that's worse for San Francisco. The ball back to the 20-yard line, creating second and 15. DeBerg will put it in the air again. Here comes Allen Page. He has to unload quickly, and it's incomplete, intended for Francis. Campbell was there, and Page just came blasting through, forcing DeBerg to unload. Watch number 82, Alan Page, as they work a crisscross, 68 and 82, and two men blocked on Osborne, and Page got through slick and clean. And the Bears do a lot of that. Uh, San Francisco should be ready for something like that, and the pass, of course, was thrown short and not complete. But the Bears are confusing the offensive line of San Francisco as you look at the score. Cleveland, 31 to 13 in the fourth. That's the good news for the Browns. Bad news, Greg Pruitt was injured in the game, hurt a knee, out for the rest of the game at least, and possibly for the season. Third and 15. The Bears in the nickel defense. DeBerg with a quick release. The pass complete to Hofer. Hofer short of the first down at about the 10-yard line. Wentford Gaines, the nickel back, made the tackle. Let's take a look at the play. They couldn't quite get enough as the Bears are working that crisscross with Page and Osborne. At that time, they jam him up. Here comes Hofer with the, out of the backfield, and there's Wentford Gaines, number 36, to make the tackle with help from Gary Fensick. So it says, watch, what's that say? Watch Hofer, stay tuned, we'll see. Here it is again. Joe Montana now kneeling to hold for Ray Wershing on fourth down. Montana at about the 18-yard line, making this a 28-yard attempt. And Wershing connects. Wershing now 10 out of 12 for the season on his field goal attempts. And with 1.56 remaining in the first quarter, the score, the Bears 7 and the 49ers 3. 
cloud in the sky. It's not a cliche today in San Francisco. It's beautiful, and uh, I'd say there are about 45 or 50,000 fans here, and of course a lot of cheerleaders, and everybody's having a good time. Enjoying Indian summer in San Francisco. Temperature in the mid-60s at game time. Ray Wershing kicks off. It's a short boot this time. Bashnagel takes it at the five. Brian Bashnagel across the 20-yard line to about the 23. And the Bears go on the attack there. 49ers have the ball for 15 plays. Moved it 63 yards. And the drive ends with Ray Wershing hitting from 28 yards out. Wishing 10 of 12 on the season. So he's been reliable for Bill Walsh. He's had a little problems on the extra points. They've had some extra points missed, but uh, on the field goals have been great. Interesting special teams play for the 49ers a week ago against Atlanta. They blocked two extra points themselves, had one of their own block, and also had a fake punt by John James of the Falcons, worked for a first down against them. Looks like they're going to uh, kick the ball off again. They called uh, offsides against San Francisco. That's apparently it. They're going to move the ball back. That's always a nebulous penalty. Uh, you got 11 guys running at the line. If the guy's off a foot or two, which has no bearing on how the kickoff is going to go, they'll, they'll throw the flag down. I guess you have to have a rule, but... I've always felt that unless the guy's two or three yards way offside, they shouldn't call that penalty. It's kind of a... Talking about the special teams play last week for San Francisco, they also had a Dan Melville punt blocked and returned by Roland Lawrence of Atlanta for a touchdown. So the kicking game provided most of the excitement a week ago for 49er fans. Well, the same thing in the Bear game, except it was the other way. The Bear special teams had a real letdown last week, and uh, Minnesota did a lot against them on special teams, and they've worked on that this week. Bashnagel now moves up to about the seven-yard line as Wershing kicks again. Short. Bashnagel at the 15, 20, 25, 30. Gets a good block. Moves across the 40 and to about the 43-yard line. Good field position for Chicago, and certainly that penalty didn't help San Francisco at all. Made a difference of about 23 yards. Houston beats the Jets in overtime on a field goal by Tony Frisch of 35 yards. They were nine minutes and 50 seconds into OT when Frisch connected to win the game for the Oilers. So the Oilers are now six and three in the Central Division. And the Jets with the tough loss are four and five in the East. The Bears lead seven to three. We have 139 to play in the first quarter. Here they come. Walter Payton with blockers in front of him. He is into San Francisco territory and finally driven out of bounds at about the 40. Ron Schumann, the middle linebacker, stopped him. There's a flag down on the play, and that might negate the Payton run. Bears were holding. Well, it may negate the uh, Payton run, but it does not negate the fact that the Bears are getting outside the horn and Payton's having plenty of uh, running room outside there in San Francisco has not made the adjustments to to stop him. It's going to be second and 20 after this call. Holy number 87 offense. Tight end Mike Cobb guilty of holding. Ball goes back to the 33. There's 87 right here nearest to you and we'll see as he throws his block. I haven't detected the holding yet, but they must have got him uh, someplace beyond that point where he hooked his arms around him as Peyton came around the horn, turned up, then back to the outside. What a beautiful runner. Bash Nagel wide right, James Scott wide left, tight end Greg Lotta on the right side, and the handoff to Dave Williams. And Williams stopped quickly by Ted Benson. I wish we could see that play again. You can see what Walter Payton does aside from running. He was the lead black and block, and boy, did he put one on. Let's take a look at Walter Payton, number 34. I think it's Hilton he blocks out front there. Right there it is on there. Boom. And there was a great block on Hilton as Walter Payton not only will run, but he will block. And many superstars will not block like that. Throw your body and knock them down. But a good play by San Francisco on defense because somebody was there to get the tackle. You take a good look at that play. 
second down and 19 to go. They pitch it back to Walter. Got to watch out for the pass. He decides to keep it. Oh, back against the grave. Walter is in the San Francisco oh, territory. They bust the ball up. And the 49ers have it. I think it was Gerard Williams who a few moments ago intercepted Mike Pitts who came up with the fumble. Tony Dungy, the free safety, hit him and knocked the ball loose. And a discouraged Walter Payton takes a long time getting up after a great run. He fumbles, and the 49ers have the ball back. Have you ever seen anybody so quick cutting back? He pushes back, pushes back against the grain. Everybody, nobody knows where he is. Finally, he cuts back again to his run, and there's Owens pulling the ball loose, and finally, recovered by Hicks. There is a magnified view as James Owens Pulled the ball loose from Peyton, and finally it was Hicks who made the recovery. San Francisco has the ball. It was Dwight Hicks out of Michigan who picked it up, not Gerard Williams, as I had said earlier. Tony Dungy and James Owens hitting it and forcing the fumble. Walter got 24 on the carry before he lost the ball. DeBerg with a good fake, and he goes up top. Intended for Solomon, and broke it up by Doug Plank, who almost had the interception. Boy, that play-action fake really froze the Bear defense, and DeBerg had all day to unload. Yes, he had plenty of time to throw the ball, but that time Doug Plank did his job as the free man, giving help to Virgil Livers on the straight arrow pattern. But let's watch the pass blocking as you were talking about it. Nobody's there, nobody's there. And here's the pass, and you'll see Plank coming from the right side of your screen to help out, and the ball was actually ended up being short, but they had him inside-outside, double coverage they threw into, and the Bears stopped it. Solomon got behind Livers, but Plank the free safety came over to make the play. They give it to O.J. Simpson. O.J.'s first carry. He breaks the tackle, moves across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Jerry Muckenstern, the left side linebacker, with the tackle. And that will probably be the last play of the first quarter as we look at O.J. And I was just taking a quick look at the stat. The Bears have fumbled 11 times this year and lost 10 of them. They better watch it. They... They're, they're snake that when they do fumble, the other team always recovers. The 108 yards that Simpson got a year ago in the second game of the season against the Bears represents his last 100-yard game. He has gone 17 games since then without gaining more than 100. We've reached the end of the first quarter at Candlestick Park with the score. The Bears 7 and the 49ers 3. These are all finals. Pittsburgh wins the Super Bowl rematch. Roger Staubach hurt. The Steelers prevail 14-3 at Pittsburgh. New Orleans upsets Washington. Buffalo hands Monty Clark another tough defeat at Detroit. And Houston goes to overtime to beat the Jets. New Orleans with their victory is 5-4. And, and depending upon what happens today between the Rams and the Giants in L.A., they could conceivably take over first place in the NFC West. As the second quarter begins, the 49ers with the ball in the with a pass out of the backfield of Mike Schumann. Schumann circling out is tackled at the 45-yard line of Chicago. Gary Fensick and Terry Schmidt combining to stop it. There may have been a penalty on the play. Let's wait and see. It was offsides against the Bears with this decline. So San Francisco has a first down. And let's see what they do on first down. And you can see why San Francisco... Offside. It's a little more exciting than right last side year. Right the defensive line. Decline. White Clark, the rookie out of Clemson, is in at a wide receiver spot, replacing Mike Schumann. Clark is wide to the right. Freddie Solomon off to the left. The give on Wilt to Wilbur Jackson on first down may have lost the ball. There's also a flag. The 49ers recovered the fumble, but there is a penalty. I believe it's against San Francisco. There was no infraction on the flight. Oh, he must have dropped his hanky. Maybe he was blowing his nose before. I don't know what happened. But the hanky went down. He probably dropped it inadvertently. We're in the first minute of the second quarter. Wholesale changes by Bill Walsh on offense here for the 49ers. That's Bob Brewer, who is in at tight end, number 82. Second and 10, the ball is at the 44-yard line of Chicago. The 49ers trail it, 7-3. to three. Both wide receivers, Schumann and Solomon, are on the left side. And DeBerg is back to throw. Oh, lobs it out to Wilbur Jackson. Jackson inside the 40. And shoved out inside the 35. Boy, did he lay the wood to Jerry Muckenstern over there on the sideline. Wilbur Jackson showed a little power there, 
and he was wide open out in the flat as the Bears were downfield. And you can see the pass protection held up. The safety valve receiver, he hit Jackson in stride and made a good grab, reached back. Watch this collision between 58 and 40. Ooh, and I think Muckenstern took the worst of that one. But he was, as you know, was kind of set, whereas Jackson had a head of steam, and that's a tough job on anybody. Jackson, who missed last season with a knee injury, catches his 24th pass of the season, good for 10 yards, and a 49er first down at the 34 of Chicago. And Jackson carries to the 30. A four-yard gain, second and six coming up. Credit Jerry Muckenstern with the tackle. He is the leading tackler on the Bear defense. He's had a very good season, Jerry Muckenstern has. And that pass to Jackson reminds me of how they spread out their receivers so much. San Francisco, they have receivers with 22, 23, 24 passes. Solomon has 38. Everybody's sharing in this newfound San Francisco offense. A year ago, Steve DeBerg was calling his own play. Bill Walsh is sending them in from the sideline this season, and DeBerg says that's taken a bit of pressure off him, allowing him to concentrate simply on execution. It wasn't perfect execution there as O'Jay bobbled the exchange, but then found the handle, and he gets to about the 27. Did you see that flying missile fly through the air? That was Doug Plank. And here comes, there's O.J. on his way down, and there comes Doug says, you might as well take an extra hit, and he comes over the top, but it was before he was down and before the whistle, so it was legal. Did you say that Doug Plank enjoys contact? Yes, he does. He says that's what this game is all about. Third and two. Schumann wide right, Dwight Clark wide left. In motion, the right end, Bob Brewer, number eight. Oh. He pulled the side, the flip was on. And they got to him so quickly that Wilbur Jackson out of the backfield on that little flare didn't even have time to turn around. DeBerg had to get it to him quickly, and Wilbur never saw it coming. Actually, DeBerg did a great job of getting rid of the ball, but the Spencer was right on him as soon as he got a hold of it. Here it is. He's back. Here comes 45 right there, and he throws it, and he got turned around, just couldn't quite hang on. It was on him so fast, but uh, pretty good play in a bad situation as we now have a timeout with a score 7-3 in favor of Chicago. The 49ers called a timeout to talk over this fourth down situation. It's fourth and a long two at the 27-yard line. And they're going to go for it, trailing 7-3. Paul Hofer and Wilbur Jackson are the running backs. Solomon and Schumann go out wide to the left side. DeBerg back to throw on fourth down. With time. This will be a first down. Hofer has the catch. He's inside the goal. if we can see it on the replay. You're going to see Hofer come against the grain, across the field, across the grain there. He has a step and then puts on a nifty move here on Gary Fensick and then just takes it off into the end zone. A good block there uh, on Livers and Hofer goes in for the touchdown. Who got that block on Livers? That was the key play. Mike Schumann delivered the block on Livers. Okay, you can see him back across the field now. He puts a little dipsy do on Fensick, and here comes the block by Schumann on 24, right there, and that made it possible for the touchdown. Paul Hofer scores San Francisco leads. 27 yards on the scoring pass, and Ray Wershing is in to try and add the extra point. As you pointed out earlier, he's 14 of 17 this year, Johnny. The three misses equaling his total number of extra point failures of a year ago so he's had some problems which were not all of his making they've had problems with their blocking and with the exchanges and the placements Joe Montana out of Notre Dame the backup quarterback kneeling at the 10 as Wershing tries to make it 10 to 7 he does with 12 minutes and 45 seconds to play in the second quarter the 49ers have come back to life they lead it 10 to 7 coach Mike White, now the offensive line coach for the San Francisco 49ers, talks it over with some of his players on the sideline. They've taken a 10-7 lead. A bouncing kick fielded by Bassnagel off the foot of Wershing. Bassnagel breaking tackles and moving out to around the 36-yard line for the Bears. At the start of this game, the Bears kept the ball for eight minutes. There's the tail on the last scoring drive for the 49ers with Hofer taking it in from 27 yards out. 
The Bears kept the ball for eight minutes on their opening drive before Peyton scored from six yards away. They led 7-0. Then on San Francisco's first play from scrimmage, Muckensturm came up with an interception, and it might look at that point as if it was going to be all Chicago. But the 49ers then got an interception of their own from Gerard Williams. They've since added a field goal by Ray Wershing and the touchdown pass from DeBerg to Hofer, and suddenly they're in front 10-7. Dave Williams carries on first down and spins to the 40. San Francisco has taken the lead in this game, as we all know, but they have to be very worried about the Peyton situation because he's getting plenty of running room. He's such a great runner that uh, you got to figure, is he over 100 yards yet? He's got to be getting close to 100 yards. It's not even halftime. He's at 83. He's in the I formation, so watch out. Unofficially, Walter Sen carries 83 yards. This is second down and six from the 40-yard line, and this is Walter Payton. He goes through a slim hole, which is all he needs, out near midfield. That'll be a first down for the Bears. You know, John, I really thought at the start of the game, the way the Bears controlled the ball and then came up with the big defensive play, like this was going to be their day, but San Francisco has turned it around. Yes, they have, and there was the big hole. Good block by Reedy Story on that play. Finally, he's brought down by Webb. Peyton got eight, which puts him at 91, and we still have 11.25 to play in the first half. First down from the Chicago 48. Back single wide left, Scott wide right, the pitch out to Walter. In some trouble in the backfield, gets out of that. An ordinary back would have been stopped for a loss. Walter turned it into a two-yard game. Well, you got to watch it. You get him in that eye formation, that quick pitch, get him out outside. He almost broke this one here as he cut back here, and there was pretty good pursuit there by Schumann to make the tackle. Otherwise, he might have had some big yardies. Walter Payton, who played last week, uh, he was a little bit sick. He had the flu. He still gained over 100 yards, caught some key passes. As you watch San Francisco line up on defense, it may look like they're using only two linebackers. They move their right side linebacker, Willie Harper, up on the line of scrimmage, going with a five-man front. Harper is blocked on this play, and Dave Williams gets some good yardage to around the 42. It's close enough to measure again, and Jerry Seaman asks for an official's timeout. I don't suppose Dave Williams would like to have an excellent game since San Francisco cut him loose earlier in the year and he's come to Chicago and done very well as a fill-in situation because they've had a lot of injuries at fullback and Williams has looked real good as the Bears have a first down. 10-18 to play in the first half. San Francisco 10 and Chicago 7. A first down at the 42 of the 49ers. Greg Lotta goes out and Mike Cobb in, bringing the play with him at tight end for Chicago. It's about time for a first down pass. They've been uh, running on this drive. If they're gonna throw, throw when you got a normal type of defense. As everybody in Chicago knows, the quarterbacking situation for a couple of years has been unstable. Fitz, Savellini, and Evans all vying for the starting nod. But with Fitz as a starter, the Bears are five and one. Fitz down by Carl Cornelius. They used Peyton with the fake of the handoff to hold up the defensive line charge. And Phipps has pretty good time, but as you'll see Bashnigo slip as the pass comes in. Bashnigo goes down, and there was just a good job also of coverage by, by Charles Cornelius. Almost had him stop the interception. He was so intent on batting it down that uh, he had uh, no possibility to get the interception, but still a good defensive play. The Bears now in a second and 10 situation. Phipps is three of seven so far for just 22 yards, and he's had one of his passes intercepted. Bashnigo wide left, Scott wide right. Phipps straight back to throw. Peyton is out on the pattern. Walter makes the catch, breaks the tackle, oh. cutting back to his left, across the 30, across the 25, dragging people with him to the 18-yard line. A flag is down, and that may bring it back. There's going to be a penalty, unless he dropped his hanky accidentally again. I don't know, but it's against Chicago. But did you see the kick move by Walter Payton? Unbelievable. Willie Harper ought to go back and pick up his shoes because he got faked out so bad. 
Peyton comes out of the backfield and just turns around for the short pass. Get it to him. It's like being around the horn on an end run. And then you'll see 59 coming up here to make the tackle right there. And you didn't see him, but I saw him. And anyway, Peyton there with his old one-handed carry. Finally, there's Cornelius with the one-handed grab. Grabs the jersey and brings him down, but it doesn't count. Nothing. Ted Albrecht was holding on the play. The fourth penalty of the first half against the Bears for a total of 35 backward yards. Moves the ball back into Chicago territory at the 48 and brings up second down and 20 with 9.36 to go until halftime. Scott on the left side, Baxter on the right. And Phipps keeps it on the ground with the draw to Dave Williams. Williams with a good move of his own. And he's shoved out at the 40, check at the 37-yard line of San Francisco. So they got about 15 of it back on that draw play. And they have William McClendon in there at the other back, and number 37 does a good job. He throws a block there on Schumann, and then Williams dips to the outside, finally knocked out of bounds. But the Bears have a respectable third down situation, a third and five or six and the, uh, situation when you have Walter Payton in there. A defense does not know exactly what's going to happen. Will they run Walter, or will they throw on third and five or six, as most teams have a tendency to do? Lotta gives Fitz the play selection from Neil Armstrong. And on third and five. Fitz drops back. Line gives him time. Over the middle and over the head of James Scott. Scott had a step inside Cornelius and Fitz missed it. And Michael Fitz is shaking his head because he had Scott open over there and just overthrew it with the... A little bit high, and that's uh, costly for Chicago because they'll have to punt now. San Francisco gets the ball back as Mike Phipps, who had a really fine game last week, goes off the field. This is the first punt by either club this afternoon. Bob Parsons to kick. He's mm -hmm. averaging 39.1. He's put 11 punts this season inside the opposition 20-yard line. This is a good opportunity to go for the coffin corner from this spot on the field. Schubert is down there trying to down it. And they do. It was not Schubert eventually who got to the ball, although he was there first. But the Bears have downed it at about the two-yard line. Bad field position for the 49ers, who lead 10-7 with 9-14 to play in the first half. Mike Spivey, who downed the ball. And they brought it up to around the four-yard line. They say that's where they touched it first. Tampa Bay beats the Vikings in Minnesota 12-10. And Tampa Bay now in a commanding position in the Central Division of the NFC with a record of 7-2. Everybody else there under five. O.J. Simpson on first down. And O.J. is out across the 10. Jerry Muckenstern made the tackle. O.J. Simpson, he has over 11,000 yards. And here it is, just a little trap come through. Osborne overruns it. Good blocking down the field. Finally, Tom Hicks, number 54, gets a hold of him, and they bring him down, but not before he puts San Francisco in a good second down situation. Second and two. Got out to almost the 13-yard line. As Johnny mentioned, O.J. with 11,122 yards coming into this game for his career. Second all-time only to Jimmy Brown. Wilbur Jackson is stopped for a loss of about one. And Jackson slams the ball down in disgust. O.J. has said this will be his final season, and if it is, he'll fall considerably short of Brown's all-time record of 12,312. Brown got those yards in nine seasons. Simpson in his 11th campaign. O.J. has averaged 4.7 yards a carry. Brown, for his career, 5.2. O.J. is third in average yards per carry all time. Joe Perry, the former San Francisco 49er, is second at 5.0. Walter Payton is fourth behind Simpson at 4.5. And Paul Hofer is back in for O.J. On third and three, over the middle, and almost intercepted by Terry Schmidt. Mike Schumann was the intended target. He led him just a little bit too much. Couldn't quite make the grab, and then it went right into the stomach of Terry Schmidt, but he didn't expect the ball to get there. And the Bears have stopped San Francisco, though, would be forced to punt, and against a slight win as Bill Walsh talks to Steve DeBerg, saying, what went wrong? Dan Melville had one blocked a week ago, and it was turned into an Atlanta touchdown. Steve Schubert is the deep man standing around midfield. 
as Melville has to punt from about his own goal line. 7.50 to play until halftime. Under no pressure at all, Melville punt. gets off a good boot. Schubert fields it back near the 50, and he's going absolutely nowhere. Bob Martin got down there, along with Randy Cross, and they combined to stop Schubert. Bear ball at midfield. They trail 10-7, 7.40 to play in the second quarter after a 36-yard punt by Melville and no return by Schubert. The 49ers paid dearly for this man in terms of draft choices sent to Buffalo and salary. Things really have not worked out that well for O.J. Simpson in San Francisco. From midfield, the Bears go back on the attack, trailing 10-7. Williams and Peyton in their ship. Fits off a long count, the straight drop back. Unloads deep down the right sideline. Incomplete. Ricky Watts was out there, but Charles Cornelius was with him step for step. Watts, the rookie out of Tulsa, can really fly, but he did not get behind Cornelius. But you could see he had a lot of speed. Phipps didn't quite get the ball down there far enough. Uh, that was a long throw. That had to be just a little bit longer. They decided to go for the ball. Phipps's stats nowhere near as impressive as they were a week ago. Against Minnesota, he's only three of nine so far. He was 22 yards. And one has been intercepted. They give it to Logan. Oh. The hole opens up, and it's quickly closed by Ted Vincent with some help from Archie Reese, and Walter got about six. Okay, let's take a look at Ron Schumann here as he has to ward off a block by Dan Neal and watch somebody else make the tackle. Peyton has carried 13 times for 99 yards. And we still have seven minutes to play in the first half. Third down and four from the 44. This is Peyton over the 100-yard mark, and more importantly, a Chicago first down at the 35. <laughs> Willie Harper finally made the tackle. Peyton now at 108 for the season, or for the game, I should say, as he got nine on that carry. And Cleveland beats the Cardinals in St. Louis, 38 to 20. The Browns now are six and three. One game back of Pittsburgh, which is seven and two in the AFC Central. Houston, which won in overtime against the Jets, also six and three, tied for second place with the Browns. The Cardinals on the other hand, the woeful two and seven. They occupy the cellar in the NFC East. On first down, Williams shakes free of one tackler, but not of another. Gordy Saracino, rookie out of Stanford, made the stop. I believe that Jimmy Webb might have been offside that time for San Francisco. Well, he didn't tell us who, but it, uh, San Francisco was offside. Clock is stopped with 6.05 to play in the half as they pace off five yards against the 49ers. And now Jerry Seaman will make it official. Offside, number 74, defense. It was Jimmy Webb who jumped off. That creates first down and five. And the ball just inside the 30-yard line of San Francisco. The 49ers lead it 10 to 7. The Bear offense roared 80 yards in 19 plays with the opening kickoff. Since then, the 49ers have stopped. Walter Payton on first down, and they were waiting for him. Only a couple on the carry. Archie Reese and Jimmy Webb wrapped him up. As you may have noticed, the Bears are switching have in the past few plays to running Walter inside off the tackle instead of pitching out to the outside. So pretty soon it's going to be time for them to pitch to the outside, but they're trying to go inside now off tackle. Walter Payton has a crack at 200 for the day. Well over 100 with plenty of time left in the first half. Clock moving, 5.30. Second down and a long two. Uh -oh. A fake handoff to Robin Earl. I don't think they designed it that way. They missed the connection between Phipps and Earl, and then Phipps had to keep the ball himself. Here, 
Earl hasn't played all that much lately. He's just out a little bit too far. And Phipps, rather than reach out so far, says, I'm going to keep it myself. I don't want to fumble. And then he turns around and says, uh-oh, I'm going to have to run. So he puts his shoulder down, tries to dive up and over, and takes a little punishment as the ball is just a touch short. It'll be about third and one and a half for Chicago as Greg Latter brings in a play. James Scott out, which means they'll be in the two tight end situation. That's a bad way to make yardage and a good way to get your quarterback killed. Yeah. They'll give him a headache. Inside five minutes, third and a long one. Ice formation. Phipps hands to Peyton. It opens up for Walter. He's got the first down. He's dragged down at about the 18. Ron Schumann and Tony Dungy there. And he made both of them pay for the tackle. Let's take a look as he gets a good block there from the uh, Noah Jackson, the pulling guard, and then he comes to the outside, turns on the speed, the old straight arm on Dungy, makes, tries to make the defender take some punishment before he goes down, and that was not a fumble. He just likes to release the ball once he hits the ground as Walter has his head down and leaning over, which is usually a sign that a man's a little bit tired. He's got his hands there on his knees, but Peyton's been tired before and been looking great. Scott is wide right, Batsnagel is wide left, first and ten from the 17 for the Bears. Fitz with the fake. Oh, he was on him. Earl was wide open and he lobs it over his head. Tim Gray was coming on a blitz from his strong safety spot and he made Fitz throw inaccurately. I do believe he got the throw off uh, cleanly before he was hit, but he probably just felt him coming there. He just uh, really overthrew him and Earl was wide open for the big game and uh, one of those things you come back and try and try again as Dave Williams comes in to bring a play in so the same kind of a situation San Francisco had a touchdown that was dropped this time it was just a miscast with a man wide open for Chicago Bashnagel to the right the tight end Lotta also on the right side Scott is wide to the left Aitman Williams the running backs behind Phipps on second and ten from the 17 with 347 left Phipps on low is caught by Greg Lotta early in the season. The Bears were not throwing much to their tight ends. They have been making good use of those passes over the middle of both Cobb and Lotta the past couple of weeks. Well, the main reason they weren't throwing to them is usually they dropped them when they were thrown to them, but they have come on and improved quite a bit the last two or three games. They're catching the ball, and the tight end is becoming an established part of the Chicago Bear offense, and it's good to see Lotta and Cobb both hanging on to the ball. Cobb is blocking particularly well, and the tight end is now becoming a factor in the Chicago uh, offense, and that's got to help in the long run. Lotta made the catch at about the nine. Third down and a long one. They've actually got to go close to the seven to get the first. Fitz turns, hands to Williams. And I believe Williams has the Chicago first down. Yes, he does. First and goal for Chicago. The ball placed just inside the seven-yard line. And Baltimore oh, upsets that. New England. So the Colts now are three and six. New England is six and three. Good game for Steve Grogan in defeat. He threw for two touchdowns, ran for another. But Baltimore pulls off the upset. First and goal from the seven. Well, I'd be tempted to throw him. Here goes Peyton, who scores the first one. Yeah. Now he has another. Second touchdown of the afternoon for Walter Payton. First one came from six yards out. This one from seven. And look at through the middle of the line in tight situation. I don't think anybody touched him. I don't think anybody touched him. Dan Neal threw a good block. Reedy sorry. And I'll tell you, it was just excellent blocking. There is Albrecht straightening his man up. Just good, superb blocking by the Chicago Bears. He goes six yards up the middle, short yardage situation, and nobody lays a hand on him. Good block by Dave Williams, number 22. Usually when a play works like that, everybody's done a job, so they all threw good blocks. Bashnagel holds, Thomas kicks. Bashnagel gets it down, and Thomas puts it through. Peyton now unofficially has 125 yards rushing in the first half, and he is just 37 yards away from being the first player in the NFL this season to hit 1,000 yards. And a look 
at a tired Walter Payton on the Chicago sideline. Bonnie Perrin is teeing the ball up, and he'll kick it off for the Bears, who have gone back in front 14-10 with 2.08 to play in the first half. The Bears have 161 rushing yards as a team, 125 of them by Peyton. 49ers have gained just 38 yards on the ground in the first half. Perrin gets the kick away, and he really booms this one. Into the end zone where Lenville Elliott will down it, and San Francisco has to cover 80 yards in exactly two minutes. We're getting a two-minute warning here with Chicago in front 14-10. There's the scoring drive, 11 plays for 50 yards, time of possession, 5 minutes, 32 seconds, 7-yard run by Walter Payton, who now has, I believe, 51 yards, uh, 51 rushing touchdowns, and has established a new record for Chicago Bears, who used to be held by Rick Caceres. The 49ers have two timeouts left, the Bears have all three of theirs. One of the reasons why recruiting is easy at USC, a look at some of their cheerleaders. Yes, and the USC band is performing here at halftime. Of course, the Trojans were up here to play Cal yesterday and beat Cal in a tough game. I believe it was 24 to 14 as you look at the USC cheerleaders. And now the San Francisco 49ers. Steve DeBerg, 80 yards away from the Chicago goal line and two minutes to do something about it. Dropping straight back, has time over the middle. The pass is complete to Freddie Solomon. And Solomon has a first down over the 30. They have two timeouts left. They will not use one here. They line up quickly with the clock running and showing 144. DeBerg hands it off to Wilbur Jackson. And Jackson roars through a gaping hole out near midfield before Gary Campbell makes the stop. This is where Chicago has problems when a team is trying to score in the last minute of the game or last minute of the half. They can't seem to be able to stop them. That's only the second time this year that Jackson has carried for more than 10 yards on a play. He's been averaging only about three yards a carry. They swing it out of the back row. He breaks the tackle. He stutter steps across the 40 and lunges to the 38 of Chicago. Dan Hampton from his defensive end spot chased him and caught him. And Hampton is slow getting up. The rookie out of Arkansas. Another 12 yards on that play. And at the timeout by the Chicago Bears, which helped San Francisco, so they still have two left. As now Tom Hicks is heading for the sidelines, and I'm sure he's going into over to talk to Buddy Ryan, the defensive coordinator, as you look at Steve DeBerg talking with Bill Walsh. And this is where all the intellectual mechanics revolve. Walsh trying to figure out what to do and convey it to his man, where the defense tries to outguess and see what... what uh, Walsh will decide on as you look at next week's NFL doubleheader. And there's plenty of action next week on CBS. Four early games. Saw the other two. Second games. The upcoming games for next week. The Bears, of course, at home against Detroit. They have their next three games at home. Detroit, LA, and the Jets. Then they play the Lions on Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. The Bird lobs it to Jackson along the sideline. It conserves time as he shoved out of bounds. Gary Campbell was the man who hit him and forced him out. We'll have to wait and see where they spot it. It's around the 25-yard line. And when I talked about a catchable pass, nice touch, that's exactly what DeBerg had on that one. He had to lift it up and over and lay it into Wilbur Jackson's arm in stride, and he did just that. If he had tried to throw a trajectory of more of a line, truck dive, line drive type of pass, it wouldn't have been complete. That gained 10, and they spot it at the 28. 56 seconds to play. Chicago 14, San Francisco 10. They were but Fensick got there a bit too fast. Gary Fensick, a little over anxious, coming on the blitz, got there before they ever snapped it. Here comes number 45. He tried to time it, and he timed it all right, right into Steve DeBerg. And of course, they're going to call it on San Francisco. Apparently, he must have upset DeBerg, and maybe he made a false move as Fensick went off sides. I guess that's what they have to, uh, what they're calling. But anyway, it's going against the 49ers. Let's see what the call is. The illegal procedure, number 17, offense. You hit it right on the head, John. It was DeBerg. Let's watch it. Here comes Fensick, 45. He's not offside yet. Oh, I don't know. He looks like he was offside before DeBerg even moved. 
Looks like a break for the Bears. DeBerg has completed five out of five on this late drive. He leads all NFC quarterbacks with six games of 200 or more yards passing. Well, I think he must have been offsides before. DeBerg back to throw. You see the clock moving down toward 50 seconds. Pressure is on him. He gets it away and it's batted down. Hey. And a fight breaking out here between Doug Flank, number 46 of the Bears, and I believe Ken McAfee, the tight end for San Francisco. Yes, the pass was intended for McAfee, but it was batted down, and Flank had no way to tell that. He was going into his tackle, and McAfee uh, just was a little upset about it. It was one of those things that happened, uh, a mismatch in size, but both of them have a lot of guts. We mentioned DeBerg with six 200-yard games this year. That leads the NFC. The overall NFL leader is Dan Fouts of the San Diego Chargers with seven games over 200, and four of those seven have been for better than 300 in consecutive weeks, and that's an NFL record. Al Harris has come on for Chicago at a defensive end spot. His debut as a member of the Bears, 6'5", 240, one of two first-round draft choices they had this year, a rookie out of Arizona State. DeBerg dropping back and spotting Hofer out of the backfield. Hofer trying to get to the sideline, but they still have two timeouts left. He stopped at the 24. They haven't stopped the clock yet. It continues to run. Gary Fensick made the tackle. And finally, San Francisco, after letting precious seconds go by, elects to call a timeout. They really should have called it as soon as Hofer was tackled. DeBerg, after a slow start, has now hit 11 of 19 in the first half for 153 yards and one interception. The interception came on his first pass of the day. Hofer and Jackson in the backfield. O.J. hasn't played very much at all. DeBerg gets rid of it. By Bob Brewer, the tight end, and Brewer is around the seven-yard line. San Francisco has one timeout left, and I think they've just used it. Excellent play by DeBerg. He just laid that pass up as Plank was very close to Brewer, but the pass was right there, and it was a big man against the little man, and Plank hung on for dear life and brought him down, but not before Brewer got to the six-yard line, first down San Francisco. They had the blitz on, but Muffinstern was knocked down before he could get there, and there was a pass right in the old red basket, and Plank saved the touchdown here with the tackle by Bright dragging him down. And since he brought him down just a couple of feet inbounds, the 49ers had to call a timeout, their last of the half, with 24 seconds left. The play the crowd of candlestick is really rolling. Solomon left, Schumann right. The bird back, can't afford a sack with the clock running, couldn't afford that either. The completion with the clock running might have been a late hit. A flag is thrown for a late hit against Chicago. It won't really hurt him too much in terms of yardage. It's just half the distance to the goal line, but where it really hurts is that it stops the clock. San Francisco should be huddling right now, get themselves set. Of course, with the penalty, they won't have to hurry that much, but they should have two plays in mind. Let's take a look and let's see where the late hit comes. They took the risk, didn't get it thrown into the end zone. And here's the pass. Bill Francis caught it. And Alan Kay on the came up with the late hit. Unnecessary roughness. Number 82. Defense. Crucial penalty called against the 13-year veteran Alan Kay. From just outside the one with 16 seconds. Play fake. Throw to the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Freddie Solomon with the touchdown drive. They got both receivers over there on the same side. He gets it right over Virgil Leiter's head into Solomon for the touchdown, and that penalty was very, very costly. They had a chance to regroup, called a nice play, fake of the handoff, and threw the ball. There's the Bill Walsh influence on the San Francisco 49ers, who are a much more exciting team. The Bears once again, and the final ticks to the half for the end of the game. They can't seem to stop the opponent. Freddie Solomon's fifth touchdown catch of the year and DeBerg's 10th touchdown pass. Rushing for the point after. It's perfect. 17-14 San Francisco with 12 seconds to play until intermission. You know, it really is an excellent call by the 49ers because 
If they did try and dive that half a yard, that one yard, and didn't make it, there's no way they could stop the clock. You take the chance, you say, why do you pass on the one yard line? If it was incomplete, they're going to get a second or a third chance at it. And the big thing was that he had to make sure he didn't get the interception. And quarterback, that's his favorite position. But he says, uh, I can catch passes, I'll play receiver. Worshing kicks off. Ricky Watts cuts in front of Brian Bashnagel and fields it. Watts across the 25, and a flag is thrown with five seconds to play in the half. It's been a penalty-filled first half, and it's taken a long time to play these first two quarters. Seems like every other play, the clock is stopped as a yellow flag flies. Bears held on the kick. go up top hoping for the TD or the pass interference or do you run out the clock? I would say with five Holding seconds. Number 62 receiving team. Dan Jiggett's got the holding call. You don't get that call too often on the kickoff, Dan. Usually on pass blocking or something like that. Not on a kickoff return, but to answer your question, Bob, I figure with five seconds that deep in your territory that they will just run the clock out. They got a T formation in there. Regular T. Look at that. Three backs lined up behind Mike Fitch. And carrying is Dave Williams, and this is the end of the first half. The Bears took the opening kick off. They went 80 yards and took a 7 0 lead. San Francisco came back, a worsening field goal, a hole for touchdown. They went up 10 7. Peyton put the Bears in front 14 10, and every seating announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Trailing 17-14 as the second half begins, the Bears, who received to open the game, have to kick to start the third quarter. Lenville Elliott and James Owens are deep for San Francisco. Lonnie Perrin kicks off for Chicago. James Owens, the rookie from UCLA, a step across the five as he takes it. And out to around the 28 or 29-yard line, and that's where the 49ers will set up shop to start the third quarter. The tackle made by Ron Rideout. And there is a visual look at the statistics for the first half. And you see San Francisco has a slight edge in most of the departments except rushing. And, of course, San Francisco has the edge in scoring. But the key is, will San Francisco stop Peyton? And will the Bears be able to stop that diversified passing attack of Steve DeBerg and the 49ers? He hit all of his receivers during that first half. Several fellows have three, four, five in, uh, receptions. DeBerg with two touchdown passes for the 49ers. Peyton with two touchdown runs for the Bears. A Ray Wershing field goal stands as the difference at this point. And DeBerg airs one out long for James Owens. And Owens had gotten a step behind Gary Fensick. And he was just barely overthrown. There, there's a penalty down. And I think maybe Owens might have turned up the field coming off in motion a little too soon. But anyway, the pass was downfield. And he had a step out there. But it was just a little bit too far. But there is a penalty and we'll see who it's against, but I think San Francisco. Shades of Chuck Bednarik. Owens has played on both offense and defense this afternoon. A free safety defensively, a wide receiver offensively. Illegal motion, number 20, offense declined. And it was Owens who was guilty of the illegal motion. They turn it down, bringing up second down and 10 from the 29. Interesting call by the Bears. They would rather have them uh, have less plays and fewer yards to go rather than give them that extra play. Both wide receivers, Schumann and Solomon, go wide to the left. The tight end, McAfee, is on the right side, and now Owens sprints out of the backfield to a wide receiver spot on the right side as well, and it's Owens who makes that catch at the 40. Driven out by Fenson. Good play by Owens because Fensick really laid the wood to him, but the pass was perfect right in his hands. He was jolted and still hung on to the ball. James Owens playing a little offense and a little defense, as you said. Here's the pass. Watch it. And he'll take a real jolt. It's over Muckenstrom's head, and there's the hit. He hangs on to the ball, and it's a first down for San Francisco. Randy Cross doing a good blocking job from his right guard spot to afford DeBerg enough time to pick out his receiver. The play went for 12, and a first down for San Francisco. About a minute gone by in the third quarter. The 49ers 17 and the Bears 14. 
They try a little razzle-dazzle in this direction, and it doesn't work for much. A couple of yards, maybe three. Wilbur Jackson came back, and Jerry Muckensturm stopped him. The Bears have brought Tommy Hart in, number 53, to replace Dan Hampton at one of the defensive end spots. And Tommy Hart, as most 49er fans know, played for years with San Francisco, a very good pass rusher and a good football player. He's had some knee problems, hasn't played all that much this year. He's getting up there in years, and it's getting towards the end for Tommy Hart. But he was one of the one of the fine ones. At 34 years old, Hart is in his 12th year out of Morris Brown. Solomon in motion on the right side. Uh -oh. They fake the double reverse to him, and O.J. Simpson keeps the ball. They fake the reverse, and O.J. kept it and got into Chicago territory. Gary Fensick tackled him at the 48. Well, that came off the play that they ran for a touchdown. They knew that the Bears were looking at game films from last week and knew that Solomon ran one for a touchdown. This time they faked it, and O.J. was able to get some yards and another first down. Let's take a look at the mechanics of the fake end around. And you can see the Bears are in the odd man front with a man over the center. They've been burying their, their defenses. There's O.J. with the fake of the handoff, and then he turns it on and gets around the horn, dips in, and finally Gary Fensick stays with it and knocks him out of bounds. An eight-yard pickup off the fake of the reverse. Wilbur Jackson carries on first down, almost puts down, and gets back on his feet and picks up maybe five. 13.05 to play in the third quarter. 49ers trying to add to a 17-14 lead. Alan Page and Jerry Muckensturm stopped Jackson on that play. Let's credit him with a gain of perhaps five yards. Let's see who gets a New Jersey on the sideline. Randy Cross, offensive lineman for the 49ers. O.J. Simpson. O.J. to the 40. There'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Gary Campbell to tackle. It'll be third down and about two. I always like a third and two situation because I think it really tests the coach, tests the team, and tests the defense because you can go either way. It's an important play because it determines the future of a drive. And let's see what they choose on third and two since they've been passing so well. Although the first two plays of this series have been runs. Let's see what they do. 49ers have converted four of seven third down situations. A fake to OJ. DeBerg wants to pass. Got a man open. The catch is made by Freddie Solomon. Solomon brought down by Doug Plank inside the 20-yard line. And Solomon is upset with the tactics of Plank. He's upset that he didn't get the touchdown on that play. Upset with himself, but he still did a good job. They faked the run. He came out of the backfield. There were three Bears, but the pass was in between all of them. There is the triangle of three Chicago Bears. He got over Terry Schmidt, who was helping out on the short. And finally, it was Doug Plank who made the tackle number 46 first down. I think Freddie was upset that Plank applied a little bit extra there after he had him on the turf. 21-yard pickup, first and 10 from the 19-yard line. About 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. O.J. Simpson trying to follow a block, and he's not going too far. Jerry Muckensturm was there first, another tackle for him, adding to his team-leading total. John Ayers was trying to block out in front of O.J., but he didn't have enough help as the Bear defense converged on the juice. What's so amazing about San Francisco is that they make this passing game go without much of a running threat. They have not run the ball well all season. They throw and throw and throw, and they still are successful usually, and the philosophy is you have to make the running game go to keep them honest on the passing attack. But Bill Walsh has defied that ancient fact. Second and nine after the short game by O.J. And this time they do give it to Solomon, and they pitch it back to DeBerg, and then the Simpson inside the 10, inside the 5, and the 4. Gave it to Simpson, an apparent reverse to Solomon, a lateral back to DeBerg, and the pass to O.J. Usually on the flea pick for a play like this, you have a man way down the field wide open, but the Bears were downfield, so they just threw it back to O.J., 
and he was really the only man open, and DeBerg spotted him, and then you get the flashes of greatness as O.J. cuts back on Gary Campbell and then cuts against the green like Walter Payton does, turns it on, and Gary Fensick makes a diving tackle, number 45, to bring him down with help from Mike Hartenstein, and San Francisco in good shape. There it is, but they made it go. That was good for 14 yards. Now on first and goal, DeBerg with the fake and the pass to the end zone intended for the tight end Brewer and broke it up. Three Bears were there. Hicks, Schmidt, and Fensick all on the scene. Schmidt tipped it and knocked it away. Would you say these guys play wide open football? First down, the heck, throw the ball. There it is as he throws into the coverage. Brewer had a little bit, but not too much room behind with the end line, and good defense by two Chicago Bears as Terry Schmidt was in on it also to knock the pass away. Second down on the four. Neither team is led by more than seven points in this game. A touchdown here would put the 49ers up by nine and possibly ten. Hofer carried. He scored earlier on a pass from DeBerg, but the Bears push him back. It's going to be third and goal. Fensick hit him first. Fensick and Plank, the Bears' safety is extremely active all over the field. Not just on pass coverage, but with the tackles on running plays as well. If you notice the sun is on one side of the field and the shadow on the other. If they try a pass over into that sun area, it's going to be very difficult on the receiver coming from the shadow into the sun and facing the sun. So let's see if they take that into consideration. Third and goal from the two. Hofer and Jackson on the running back. They fake it to Hofer. DeBerg with a deep drop. He's all the way around the 15 yard line. Got to get rid of it and does incomplete. He threw it in the general direction of Ken McAfee. And Ray Wershing comes out onto the field along with his holder, Joe Montana. The Bears may have dodged a bullet here. They may be happy to escape with only three points on the board. San Francisco at first and goal at the four. And apparently now they'll settle for three. Of course, with Bill Walsh at the helm, you can never rule out the fake. <laughs> well, they could have a six-point lead with this play, and then one more field goal would give them uh, more than a touchdown advantage. So, Montana kneels at about the 10. This is just the same as an extra point. Low snap, but he gets it down. There's a flag on the play. And let's see what the call is going to be. The kick by Wershing was good, but that may not matter at the moment. They, may, uh, they can only get half the distance to the goal line. And they may go ahead and take the three points. Anyway, well, I don't know if it would give them a first down, would it? Half the distance to the goal line would be very close. Well, it was first and goal from the four. Offside, number 82. They're going to decline. Defense, decline. Field goal is good. They take the three points by Ray Wershing, and with 8.02 to play in the third quarter, San Francisco has a 20 to 14 lead. At the start of the game, the Bears held the ball for seven minutes and 59 seconds before Peyton scored. At the start of the third quarter, the 49ers hold the ball for 13 plays and six minutes and 58 seconds before Wershing kicks a field goal. Now a bouncing kickoff that Bashnagel has trouble picking up, but eventually does. And Bashnagel lunges forward to around the 28. And that's where the Bears will start their first possession of the second half. They trail it 20 to 14. And the figures on the 49ers scoring drive. And looking at that Minnesota Tampa Bay game, with Tampa Bay beating the Vikings, they are now 7 and 2. So this has to be a must game for Chicago. If the Bears lose this one, there's no chance to win that Central Division title at all. Obviously, at this point, you're going to have to win that division to get into the playoffs. A wild card is not likely to come from the center. Both wild cards might very well come from the east. Wershing, with his two field goals today, is 11 of 13 for the season. Phipps hands to Peyton, who had 125 yards in the first half, and Walter is out around the 35. Archie Reese with the tackle. There he is, out of the I formation. They want to give him a chance to 
uh, good field of vision let him pick his way because he's so quick at cutting back and uh, it's a very good tactic to keep Walter deep and let him survey the field. 49 a linebacker Scott Hilton who has been bothered the past couple of weeks by a sore shoulder now has a slight shoulder separation and he will not return for the rest of this game. Fitz hands to Williams and a reception committee waiting for him. And all of a sudden Scott Hilton got back on the on the field. He says my shoulder doesn't hurt. In fact he was in on that tackle. So Hilton must be a pretty tough guy to make tackles when you got a sore shoulder. You know, you're right. They just handed me a note that said Hilton would not return, and on the very first fair play from scrimmage, he's in on the play. He does have a separated shoulder unless they misdiagnosed it at halftime. I'm sorry, I brought the whole subject up. <laughs> Third down and four from the 34. Bachnagel left, Scott right. Phipps, who has not had a good day passing, drops back. His line gives him time. Broken up neatly and headed for Scott and passed away by free safety Tony Dungey. But a flag. They may call Dungey for pass interference. He may have gotten there just a split second too soon. Only the slow motion will tell us that because it was very, very close. As Dungey was helping out on inside coverage, they had to play very well covered. As you're going to see, Phipps dropped back for the pass and he had inside help with Scott. And here comes Dungey. Let's see. Number 27, Nathan. Why is that close? It's a judgment call by the official, and it went for Chicago and against San Francisco. It gives the Bears a first down at their own 49. 6.22 to play in the third quarter. Scott on the left side this time with Bachnagel right. Peyton slips out on the pattern. Phipps delivers. The catch is made by Greg Lotta, and they'll rule he was down before the fumble. Lotta made the tackle, and Harper and Dungey, Lotta made the catch, rather, Harper and Dungey with the tackle. Willie Harper, who missed all of last season with a knee injury, certainly their best linebacker, and one of the best in the entire league. The Bears have gone with that tight end pass across the line of scrimmage again, and they've completed time and time again. It's been a good one for them. That time, San Francisco was much closer to covering it, but it was still a completion. Only a short gain, second down and seven. Clock moving with 5.35 to play in the third. Pips with the fake, and with time to throw. Over the middle, Kevin Mike Cobb makes the tackle. Behind the secondary and dragged down from behind by Scott Hill. Prevented a touchdown, but Cobb is inside the 10. Mike Cobb, who has been blocking very well, now coming on in the passing game. The fake of the handoff to Williams. Fitz hit, held the ball very well, hit it, and there it was. He got behind the linebacker, and then he avoided this tackle here. And it, if it had not been for Scott Hilton making the diving grab, the Chicago Bears would have had a touchdown. But now they're down to the 10. To call it first and goal. The nose of the ball appears to be inside the 10. The play gained about 39 yards. Peyton coming right, cutting around tacklers and picking up about three to the seven. Tony Dungy with the stop. Boy, didn't it look like they had him dead to right and he still got three yards out of it. The clock is moving and it's down to four minutes and 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. Each team has had the ball only once in this period. Both have put together sustained drives. Second and goal from the seven-yard line. They cannot get a first down. Got to take it all the way home. A touchdown and point after would give them the lead. Walter Payton, his third touchdown of the afternoon. There's a penalty and a flag down. There is a flag on the play, and let's hold everything. It's a touchdown, apparently against San Francisco. The play is going to stand. Encroachment, number 28, defense, decline, 
touchdown. Charles Cornelius jumped off. They turned that down, and Peyton has his third touchdown run of the afternoon. This one good for seven. His earlier ones, one for six, another for seven yards. And good blocking by Dan Neal and Noah Jackson as they really put the block on there and create the hole, and that's when, where San Francisco has been vulnerable all day. Thomas Bushy for point after. He drills it through, and the Bears only assume the lead. Three minutes and 56 seconds to play in the third quarter. Chicago 21, San Francisco 20. The man who once finished second in the Soul Train dancing contest. And he can dance out on that football field, can he? Ronnie Perrin is the kickoff man, number 25. Waiting deep are Lenville Elliott, the former Cincinnati Bengal, and the rookie James Owens. And Lenville Elliott watches this one sail through the end zone, so inserting Perrin as the kickoff man has been a wise move on Neil Armstrong's part. Yes, it has. He's added a, a, a new dimension. Bob Thomas is great on field goals, but he wasn't really kicking that deep on the kickoff, so they've got Perrin for the power foot and Thomas for the touch. So Lonnie Perrin has been a a welcome addition to this Chicago Bear team. That's what you call very positive thinking. Well, they're one and seven. They're only three games out of first place in their division. So That's you gotta not, be one no further seven. than the Bears right now. You gotta be one and seven. I would think the NFC West is about the best place to be in that position. Since the Lewis currently occupies first place after a win today against Washington at only five and four. Here's the story on the last Bear drive. Peyton has all three of their touchdowns today. The 49ers have scored the last two times they touched the ball, an 80-yard touchdown drive in the last two minutes of the first half. And then they settled for a field goal after a long drive at the start of the third quarter. They got only one on that last play, second down and nine. Clock winding down toward three minutes to play Blitz. in the third quarter. A bear blitz is got his target, but he gets rid of it to Hofer. Hofer has a first down and then come up to around the 37. Doug Plank and Gary Fensick, the safeties, combined to bring him down. There you see the blitz. There's 51 and 54. Heron and Hicks coming. He just throws a quick screen out there. And there's the blocking up front. Hofer takes off, follows his blockers up there. And finally, it's Fensick and Plank who makes the tackle. Another first down for San Francisco as Hofer comes off the field, and he's had himself quite a game, but he's holding his side. He must have got hit in the ribs there. He had that same problem during the first half. Fred Quillen was the man out in front of him, the 49ers center, throwing the block down field. They got 17 on the last play. Simpson carries on first down. O.J. diving across the 40. Boy, with the 49ers throwing blocks down the field, that's uh, really a good sign for an offense. They had three linemen and their wide receivers were downfield throwing blocks. If Simpson had broken that, he would have gotten himself some yards. Go Bill Simpson. Nobody can, nobody like Mike Phipps can. Nobody can like Mike Phipps can. Or nobody can do it like Mike Phipps can. So far, that hasn't been true today, as DeBerg has outperformed it. We move inside two minutes to play in the third quarter. The Bears lead it 21-20. Second down and five from the San Francisco 43. DeBerg with the play fake. Oh. One wide open over the middle, Freddie Solomon. Into Chicago territory with the reception. Solomon, unless somebody somewhere in another NFL game today has gone completely wild, is the leading pass receiver in the league now. He started the day just two behind Raymond Chester, and Chester's Oakland club did not play this afternoon. And he was really open. He found the open spot. DeBerg, I... He just doesn't look like the same man that we saw last year. He was throwing interceptions all over the place. This year he's shown all kinds of plays, doing very well. That play covered 14 yards. It was Solomon's fifth catch of the afternoon. First and 10 from the 44 of Chicago. Simpson trying to go wide and brought down for a loss by Tommy Hart. OJ says, nice tackle, Tommy. a couple back to the 46 second down and 12. Tommy Hart still makes his home here in the San Francisco area. Less than a minute to play in the third quarter. 
Mariners won it 17-14 at the half. They trail it 21-29. Blitz. The Birds gets rid of it in time. Freddie Solomon makes a knee-level catch. Solomon to about the 30-yard line and a first down for San Francisco. Virgil Livers with the tackle. And here comes the blitz again, and the bird was perfect. They're on him. He throws the ball, and then Solomon got the outside position on Livers. Couldn't quite outrun him, but he still got the first down before number 24, Virgil Livers, brings him down. Here's the ISO on him. Down. He just hooks in, dips to the outside. Almost broke it. Six carries, six receptions for 76 yards, as the Chicago Bears still lead it by a score of 21 to 20, but San Francisco is moving. We start the fourth quarter with Chicago's one-point lead hanging rather precariously in the balance here as San Francisco has the ball at the Bear 31. I keep getting this feeling that O.J. is going to break one. First and ten as DeBerg walks up to the line of scrimmage on his way to another fine afternoon. Probably his seventh 200-yard plus passing game of the season. Quick drops. And a toss to the sidelines, which is caught by the rookie Dwight Clark. They get about six on that to the 25. Just a short precision pass. One, two, three, throw. One, two, three, throw. Almost impossible to stop unless Virgil Ivers there, who was frustrated, wants to take a chance and go for the interception. Schumann goes wide to the right. Freddie Solomon, who has been a potent offensive weapon for the 49ers this afternoon, is wide to the left. O.J. Simpson and Wilbur Jackson are the running backs, and it's Jackson who gets the call on second down and about four, and he'll be short of the first down. They've got to go to just outside the 20, and this is going to be third and about two. No, I think he's got the first down. You know, you're right. I thought he had been stopped way short of that. And he is very close to the first down, my mistake. There's also a player down on the play, and it looks like Ron Singleton of the 49ers. I thought they had Jackson stopped a whole lot quicker than that, but he squirmed free and got close to the 20-yard line. As they look over the injured player, we'll take a break. Ron Singleton hurt on the play. He's been replaced at his left tackle spot by Gene Barrett, a seven-year man out of Tulsa. Barrett, 6'6 and 250. And the Seagulls soar over the bay in San Francisco. And the San Francisco dive bombers. The 49ers did get the first down. The measurement showed that. DeBerg with a fake and a good one. Seven in the middle, complete to Bob Buller, the tight end. He's inside the 10. That's another first down. The 23rd first down for the 49ers in the game, and it's first and goal. The 49ers have shown quite a variety of offensive pass patterns. They have players all over the field. They haven't gone to one pass pattern and made it work and work and work. They have just mixed it up. First and goal from the nine. 49ers trail by one, but they're knocking on the door. Phil Francis and Paul Hofer are the running backs behind the bear. And they'll keep it on the ground for this first down play, and the Bear defense is waiting for that. Paul Hofer carried. And got to about the six-yard line, where it will be second and goal. Now, here's where we see the 49er offensive philosophy intact. Now, a lot of teams would figure, well, we got two chances to run the ball and get in for the touchdown. If we don't get it, we'll get the sure field goal and take the lead or they can take the risk on second down and figure we're going to go with two passes and go for the touchdown and take the chance that there's a mistake or an interception and not get anything out of it. Steve DeBerg, in his third year out of nearby San Jose State, decides he wants to talk this over with Bill Walsh. To look at his stats, the timeout with 13.02 left. And the score is Chicago 21, San Francisco 20. We'll return after this word from your local station. The 49ers had to spend a timeout on that last play, Johnny. They're down to two for the game. Yes, the 30-second clock was about to run out. That could cost them at the end of the game. DeBerg over 200 yards today, the seventh time he's done that this season. 
from the sixth, second down and goal. Long count by DeBerry. Both wide receivers on the left side, a lob to the left for Sullivan. He got Virgil Livers turned around and it went right over Virgil's shoulder without his ever seeing it. And Sullivan has his second touchdown catch of the day. I'm sure that was an audible because the Bears faked the blitz. He just threw it up and it, what happens so often is that the receiver spots the ball first and that's what Sullivan did for the touchdown. The pass was actually thrown short, but Solomon took a look around, came back and got it. And of course, Livers had to react to the defender, and it was too late. And there were some games going on between the quarterback and the Bears defense taking the blitz. Well, as we ride the seesaw, now it's the 49ers' turn to have the lead. Which Wilson will try to add another point to. And he does. 12 minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the game. And at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, our score, the 49ers 27 and the Bears 21. Freddie Solomon's stats for the day. Two of those seven receptions, good for touchdowns. Steve DeBerg has thrown for three scores. Walter Payton has run for three for Chicago. And this man, number 14, Ray Worsing, has two San Francisco field goals, and that's the difference in the game. 27-21. Bassnagel fields the kick at the seven. Brian Bassnagel bounces off the tackle, trying to turn it upfield. Across the 30, across the 35. And out of bounds and around the 38-yard line. Good field position for the Chicago Bears, and each team seems to be able to go down and score every time they get the ball. That was 11 plays for 80 yards. Time of possession, 5 minutes and 58 seconds. Freddie Solomon having quite a day. And it's winding up to a, a duel between the passing game of San Francisco and the running of Walter Payton. Dating back to the first half, the 49ers have scored the last three times they've touched the ball. The Bears have scored the last two times they've had it, unless you count the five seconds they had possession for one play at the end of the first half. Disregarding that, they've scored their last two times. Peyton Carey. There he is. Walter spinning outside. He is in the San Francisco territory trying to straight arm a tackler. And finally, out of bounds, he goes. Charles Cornelius was the guy who caught the straight arm from Peyton. Well, that was jammed up in the middle, so Walter, with his great quickness, just dipped to the outside and got around the horn. As you can see, it was designed inside. There's Walter pushing off and then just getting around the horn, turning on the speed, and they were not able to get him. And there's a pretty good block out there by Brian Bashnigal. He delayed the man for quite a while, allowing Peyton to get Chicago a first down. Bashnigal. Peyton with 17 on that carry, 158 for the day. He's four yards away from 1,000 for the season. Dave Williams. Simple straight ahead carry that's good for four or five. Scott Hilton playing with an injured shoulder made the tackle. The numbers on Sweetness. There's definitely a, the bare middle of the bare offensive line has been overpowering San Francisco in the middle. And that's been the, the real trend. They were going outside first. Now they're going inside. And they're able to hold him up so that Walter can see where he's going. Second down, six from the 40. Scott left, Bashnagel right, the push to Peyton. And for the first time today, they stop him for a loss. He loses about three. Cornerback Gerard Williams will get credit for the tackle. Gerard Williams made the tackle, and the San Francisco crowd went up for grabs. They finally stopped Walter Payton with a loss. Now they're into a third down eight situation, which will test the Chicago Bears. They have really abandoned the passing game the last two quarters. The clock is moving with 11.20 to play in the game. San Francisco leads by six. Third down, we're gonna call it nine. He lost three on the last carry. Blitz. Here comes the blitz, Fitz unloads, left sideline incomplete. Scott was out there, and Gerard Williams was with it. Scott Hilton coming on that blitz supplied the pressure to Mike Fitz. And it's been quite a turnaround for Fitz since a week ago. So effective against Minnesota, his passing game nowhere nearly 
as important to the Bears this afternoon against the 49ers. He's kind of favoring his shoulder there a little bit. He may have, but here's the, take a look at the blitz. They really put the pressure on him, and he made him throw it up for grabs and hope that, that uh, Scott could make the catch. And there's the hit that he took after he got rid of the ball. Bob Parsons trying to drop it in the coffin corner. Can the Bears get down there in time? He got across the goal line and barely into the end zone for a touchback. With 10.56 to play, San Francisco still has their six-point lead. Sideline activity at Candlestick, and the Giants, we are told, lead the Los Angeles Rams in Los Angeles 14-7 in the fourth quarter. If that holds up, the Saints, who won today against the Redskins, will have a one-game lead on the floundering Rams in the NFC West. After a 43-yard punt by Bob Parsons, which barely missed stopping an inch or two from the goal line and went across for a touchback, San Francisco has the ball at their own 20. They give it to Solomon coming around. This has been an effective play for them, but Solomon gets only three or four. Tom Hicks was in on that tackle, number 54. As they tried the end around, you see Hicks follow the pursuit, comes up, and really slows him down. Did not make the tackle, but presented the big game by Freddie Solomon. And this is one time where the Bears are really going to be tested. They've got to stop San Francisco this time, or they're going to be in big trouble. And they have not been able to stop the 49ers the last three or four times they've gotten the ball. Almost the entire field in shadows now, except deep in Bear territory toward the right corner of the end zone. Some sunshine remains. Was there a flag on that last play, Johnny? I yes. believe so. Let's see what Jerry Seaman decides. Clock is stopped with 10.09 left, so we have plenty of time for more fireworks, and there has been plenty of that so far. It goes against Chicago. Tommy Hart offside. 49ers get five yards for that, and it's second down and one, and DeBerg is approaching 300 yards passing. Shaky start. His first one was intercepted. Since then, he's completed 22, three of them for touchdown. They need a yard, and Hofer runs into a stone wall. Led by Alan Page. as expected, romping over Green Bay. If the Packers lose that game, they'll be three and six, as with the Bears if they lose this one, three and six. And look at this, San Francisco, I should say, the New York Giants lead Los Angeles 13 to seven in the fourth period. Apparently the Giants missed an extra point or we got an inaccurate score a moment ago. We were told 14-7, it's 13-7, which is important because the Rams can win it rather than tie it now with a touchdown and point after. 49ers have converted five of nine third downs. Third and one now with 9.38 left in the game. The ball at their 29. Steve DeBerg gives to Paul Hofer. Hofer has a San Francisco first down. Good running by Hofer because he was hit by Fensick and Tom Hicks and busted the tackle and got the first down. They went off tackle that time, actually a short end run there, and took the risk and got the first down. As you look at Cincinnati, killing Philadelphia, 37 to 6 in the fourth through. Looks like all three of the top teams in the NFC East will lose today. Dallas has lost to Pittsburgh, Washington upset by New Orleans, and Philadelphia getting clobbered by the Bengals in Cincinnati. That was the 25th San Francisco first down of the afternoon. So if you think Bill Walsh hasn't brought offense to Candlestick, you're mistaken. Wilbur Jackson is in motion, but the pitch goes out to O.J. Simpson, and O.J. is dragged down for a loss. Tommy Hart and Jerry Muckensturm combining for the stop. Kansas City, after a quick start, has run into troubles. Last week, a nightmare fumble in the closing minutes cost them a game against the Giants. This week, losing to Denver in the fourth, 20-3. And San Francisco and Bill Walsh have... Uh... They've run the ball since they've gotten this, uh, got possession, and they've been doing things very well passing, but you have a tendency when you get down to eight minutes left 
to kind of sit on a lead and what they do best they're not doing and so let's see if they decide to go to the pass where they've been so successful and take the chance from the 30 second and 12 exactly eight minutes left Schumann in motion to the right the bird dropping back with time to throw over the middle Lenville Elliott whom we have not seen much of today except on the kick return team made the catch they get five on the play it'll be third and seven Decided to go topside this time, and just with the back downfield, brings him across over the middle. He stumbled. Good play by Elliott to make take possession, and Bruce Heron is there for the tackle. Not able to get the first down, so they have a third and seven situation. Clock moving with 7.20 left. This is a very, very big play right here. Look at those stats. 49ers 27, Bears 21, and we're in the fourth quarter. DeBerg has plenty of time to throw. When you give him that time, he'll usually find somebody like Freddie Sullivan. Another San Francisco first down. Beautiful timing. There were four Chicago Bears. I'll tell you, the back was wide open. Wilbur Jackson was wide open, too, out of the backfield. You're going to see all kinds of white jerseys, but the pass was right in the middle and completed. Beautiful execution by the San Francisco 49ers. We may see that play again. Boy, there were two backs wide open. One semi downfield, the other one out in the flat on that play. DeBerg approaching 300 yards passing for the afternoon. From the 47 of San Francisco, the handoff to Len Bellelli. Nice hole opens up for him. He's in Bear territory. Gary Campbell with the tackle. Clock moving, six and a half left. Freddie Solomon, by the way, has caught eight passes today for 94 yards and two touchdowns. The scoreboard clocks the candlestick, winding down towards six minutes left. The Bears are going to have to stop the 49ers quickly if they want to have enough time for their ground game to take them in for a possible winning touchdown because their passing game has not been effective. On second, Wilbur Jackson stumbles forward and he's got another 49er first down. That's the 27th first down for San Francisco in this game. Well, I would say these San Francisco fans have to be excited. They haven't seen this team play ball like this for several years. And they're playing very, very well. Controlling the ball now, eating up the clock, leading 27-21. The Bears have got to come up with a big play to stop this momentum. They need a fumble or something along that line. Despite the 1-7 and seven record, the feeling about this team and their new head coach, Bill Walsh, has been very positive in the Bay Area this season. They believe in Walsh. He's got a five-year contract and time to build. Wilbur Jackson carrying. Decent first down yardage. And the clock moving with 5.05 remaining. DeBerg looking toward Walsh on the sideline. Bob Brewer, the tight end, trots in with the new play. Bill Francis has come in the game. He replaces Wilbur Jackson. Schumann wide right, Solomon wide left. Lenville Elliott and Phil Francis are the running back. Second down and six. Brewer to tight end in motion. DeBerg putting it up. Throwing on the run into a crowd broken up. Intended for Schumann. Blank and Schmidt on the cover. Well, he had to make that split decision. DeBerg actually had a chance to run there. Pretty good play defense by the Bears, but the timing was off. He was there, and by the time the pass got there, the Bear defenders were there. But DeBerg could have run probably for the first down that time, but he chose to throw the ball. And listen, when you're running with the ball, and you got to make those split decisions. You don't always do the right thing. Another big play, third and six, last time they got it. They succeeded seven of 11 times on third down. Both wide receivers on the left side. Blitz. The blitz coming on to Burr. Batted down as he releases. Big, big play for the Bears. They will force the 49ers to punt with 4.17 left. It's a good thing for San Francisco it was battered down because went for Gaines and Doug Plank had McAfee covered like a blanket. There probably would have been an interception. If you take a look at the top of your screen now, as he goes back, 
And you can see the blitz coming with Fensick and Campbell. If this ball had not been batted, notice the two bear defenders right there for the interception at the top of your screen. Enter Dan Melville, number 11. Melville, a rookie out of California, came into the game averaging 37.5. He's been called upon to punt only once, as you can see, and that was for just about his average, 38 yards. Schubert standing at the 10. Low snap. Melville aiming for the corner. Schubert fakes the fair catch call, lets it bounce, and into the end zone it goes. 37-yard kick and a touchback. Bears have 4.05 to work with. Their ball at the 20, and they trail 27-21. Dan Melville's punt into the end zone leaves the Bears 80 yards away from the possible winning touchdown. Mike Phipps has completed just 6 of 14 for 72 yards. He's had one picked off. He hasn't thrown for any scores. Peyton has run for all three Chicago touchdowns. In contrast, DeBerg is 24 of 37, 293 yards, one interception, three touchdowns. 4.05 left. Phipps will throw on first down. Good protection. Left sideline, Peyton. Steps around, he'll cut back against the grain. Only Walter can get away with this. Jumps up in a hurry, trying to conserve time. They got a first down. He almost broke that. If he cut back one more time, Peyton was wide open. They had nobody over there covering Walter when he made the grab here. And then he just headed back the other way. He had to give ground a few times. He is so quick. Once, twice, three times. Why not again? Now again, and finally, they get... <laughs> Whistles blowing. At first, they had indicated first down, and then they moved the ball back and spotted at the 29, and that would make it a gain of nine and second down and one. Now let's see what Jerry Seaman has to say. They had started to move the chains, and then they replaced the ball at the 29. Maybe something to do with the clock, too. They were looking up at the scoreboard. And, uh, Shows 316 left. He's ordering a, st <laughs> ordering a steak, a steak and onions and potatoes for tonight after the game. No, I, I think it's got something to do with uh, with the clock. This is a real nail biter. I'm sure Papa Bear George House at home sitting. I don't know if he's sitting. He's probably the standing time up was right set now. Back to 325. They're going to move the clock back from 316 to 325, which saves the Bears a few precious seconds. At first, they had spotted the ball beyond the 30-yard line. They started to move the chains. Then they moved it back to the 29, which leaves them short by a yard at second down and one. I'm surprised San Francisco's defense would leave Walter Payton so open out there in the flat. Uh, you think that the way he has burned them one way or another today that they would have somebody designated to go with him or, or double him with linebackers or something and take their chances somewhere else because the Bears have not been able to hurt anybody anywhere else, at least in this game, except for the tight end has got a couple of key passes. Lotta is the tight end on the right side. Pass maker wide right, Scott wide left, second down and a yard to go. Backs in the eye, Williams the first man, Peyton the second, to give it to Walter. He needs seven yards for a thousand. He's got a first down, and he got just about seven on that carry to the 36. At one time, he was within four of a thousand for the year, then he was tackled for a three-yard loss. He might be smack at a thousand now. San Francisco simply cannot stop Walter Payton. They're going to have to hope for a mistake by Chicago somewhere, whether it be a fumble or ill-advised uh, throw or something like that. But Payton has just broken the 1,000-yard mark for this 1979 season. And I believe he's done it every year, hasn't he? With the exception of... Uh, did he, he didn't get a 1,000, I don't believe, in his first year. Here's a look at that last carry, the one which put him right at the 1,000-yard mark for the season. Did you notice the penetration by the Chicago Bear offensive line? Again, there's some discussion at the sideline, and the Giants have widened their lead at the Coliseum in L.A. to 20-7 to over the Rams. And there will be all kinds of talk this week about what's wrong with Ray Malavese's Rams. They're resetting the clock again. Apparently, it's been malfunctioning, and it's now 2.55 rather than, I think it said 320, uh, 225 there, so. Now they have now a zero. scoreboard collapse.
Stanford. Down to zero. <laughs> San Francisco fans are saying it's all over. Zero. Let's hope they don't start tearing down the goalposts. Well, we're going to have to guess now because both scoreboard clocks here at Candlestick are off. Two minutes and 55 seconds remain at the start of this play. First and ten from the 36-yard line of Chicago, and the Bears trail by six points. The six drops back. Mike Fitz over the middle, and Brian Bashnagel with the catch at midfield for a first down for the Bears. Charles Cornelius got there too late. That's the final now. The Dolphins beat the Packers. Both clocks are not working, so we can't tell you exactly what time it is, but it's heading down towards two minutes. The pass to Bashnagel was good for 14 yards. Somewhere around two minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Fitz under pressure and sacked. First time today that the 49ers have sacked Fitz. And the old pro Cedric Hardman was in on that play. He hasn't played most of the day out with a pinched nerve in his neck, but he's come on when it counted. And there it is. The tackle, a big play to put the Bears in the hole. A clutch play by the San Francisco 49ers. It's Fitz was trying to look for somebody downside, decided to wheel out, and he didn't know that Hardman had gotten through. Welcome to those of you who have been watching Miami and Green Bay. We have reached the two-minute warning at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, and the 49ers lead the Bears 27-21. When you have questions like these about your money, get professional answers. Bob Costas with Johnny Morris at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. We have reached the two-minute warning as Bill Walsh walks the sidelines for the 49ers. He may be on the verge of his second victory of the season. And for those of you who have been watching the Miami Green Bay game and have just joined us, we'll remind you that the clocks are not working at Candlestick Park. The scoreboard clocks are not working. We have just reached the two-minute warning. We're going to have to guess as to the time remaining, and we imagine that they will make announcements over the PA system as the time winds down toward the end of the game and advise us as to how much time remains. San Francisco hasn't won back-to-back -back games in two years. They won last week their first victory of the season against Atlanta. Bears came in here at 3-5, and five, 49ers 1-7. Fitz was sacked for the first time today on the last play. It's second down and 20 from the 40-yard line of Chicago. Fitz dropping back. This time the protection is there. And so is the pass. It is guard loose. Let's see if they rule it a reception and a fumble recovery or incomplete. One official says complete. The other official says incomplete. And the latter is the call which will stand. Let's look at it again. Incomplete pass. Pretty good pass protection that time for Mike Phipps, and the pass was there. Let's see, he's got it. They're ruling no possession. It's a close call there, but it is ruled incomplete. James Scott had it, but then it was guard free by cornerback Gerard Williams. The Candlestick fans are chanting defense. It's third and 20. For Ricky White. Ricky Watts has brought in a play for Chicago. Brian Bashnigle, no, he's not out. They better uh, Three get somebody out of there. Now Bashnagel does race for the sideline. They fake it to Peyton. Deep drop and a lob out of the backfield to Dave Williams. They need 20 yards. Williams has about 10 of that, maybe 12 of it. They're going to have to go for it on fourth down. The clock continues to run, but we remind you again, we can't tell you exactly how much time is left. Now the Bears have asked for a timeout. The first one they've used, so they still have two remaining. Timeout at Candlestick. Fourth and nine coming up for the Bears. Do or die, they trail by six. A minute and 37 seconds left in the game. The Bears are at the San Francisco 49 with fourth and nine. Two wide receivers to the right, Bashnagel and Scott. Tight end Lotta on the left side. Mike Phipps has hit 9 of 18 for the day. 
And he all is there desperately. Deep down the right side, Scott is open. This will be the Chicago touchdown. Touchdown to James Scott. The game is tied, and Thomas can put them in front with the point after as Scott is mobbed in the end zone by his Bear teammates. The 49ers put a blitz on. Scott went downfield. Pitts was able to get it off and threw it perfectly to James Scott. The same situation as they had two years ago when they had a 3-5 record and threw one up to Greg Latta and went to 4-5 instead of 3-6. Here it comes again. They put the blitz on and it fits through a perfect strike. Scott beat his man. He beat number 21, Gerard Williams. The Bears could have the lead if they make this extra point, but remember, there's well over a minute to go and San Francisco has moved the ball very well all day long. He got behind Charles Cornelius and James Owens and caught a 49-yard scoring strike from Mike Fitz. This is it. We're tied at 27. Fingers hold. Thomas's kick is good. And the Bears have gone up 28 to 27. We can only guess as to the time remaining. It's about a minute and 25 seconds. 60 minutes following football this afternoon or early evening, depending upon the part of the country you're in on CBS. Well, you have to wonder about the San Francisco defense. They went to the blitz, a partial blitz that time, one man, and for a receiver on fourth and nine when they have to go the whole field to get a guy man for man situation and be able to get deep like that you have to wonder whether san francisco's defensive strategy was all that wise uh, because you don't want him to get the first down but you certainly don't want to let anybody get behind you as you look at al harris number 90 but he had a basic man for man situation was able to outrun him but that's football and it's not over yet each team has two timeouts left Exactly a minute 25 remaining. We're advised of that from the sidelines. We can't check the scoreboard clock. Both of them are not operating properly, and so they've turned them off. San Francisco, of course, does not need the touchdown. They just have to get down into the field goal range, and they can win this ball game. And the Bears are back in the same situation that they have failed so many times this season, and that is to hold the lead there at the end and not let a team go down the field 10, 12, 15 yards a clip. And Steve DeBerg has shown an ability to do that this afternoon, directing this 49er offense. Lonnie Perrin is the kickoff man. James Owens and Lenville Elliott wait deep at about the San Francisco five. 28-27 Chicago. I noticed Gary Fensick is in on the kickoff team. He volunteered to play on the special teams. Ronnie Perrin has booted several of them through the end zone today. This is a low-line drive kick, which Lenville Elliott allows to bounce, and it went into the end zone, I believe, for a touchback. Elliott was hopeful that it would bounce out of bounds for a five-yard penalty against the Bears, but the ball stayed in, fortunately, for Chicago. Now we have 1.16 left, and the ball at the 20-yard line. And San Francisco has two timeouts. Uh, that one time when they uh, had to call a timeout to avoid the penalty down in the goal line could uh, end up, as we mentioned before, tossing. And they have two timeouts, 80 yards to go, and over a minute to play. And what did you say, minute 16? Minute 16 is what we're told. There's the go-ahead touchdown again. Bips to Scott for 49 big ones. Thomas's point after made it 28-27. DeBerg dropping the throw. 49ers coming right back. Tight end Ken McAfee with the catch. They have two timeouts left. They're out to the 37-yard line. They're lining up quickly and not using a timeout. That's a first down. And DeBerg will put it in the air again. DeBerg firing deep down the right sideline and set it for three. Two for two this afternoon, and 11 
for 13 on the season on field goal attempts. There's the timeout situation. We're advised from downstairs that there are 55 seconds left in the game. Cincinnati really put it on Philadelphia, as you saw there briefly. When this one is over, we'll be saying a fast goodbye. And so now it's time to thank the people who put us, helped us put this telecast together. Steve DeBerg has 26 of 39 for 348 yards passing. Three touchdowns, one interception. Tom O'Neill was our producer this afternoon at Candlestick Park. Big Duke struck the director. Wally Miller, the associate producer. And a look at some of the others. Let's see if the Bears go into their normal coverage. Excuse me, Bob, or whether they'll take a risk, maybe, and try and cross San Francisco up with some kind of a a blitz. you got to wonder. They sure don't seem to be able to cover them downfield. 55 seconds left. One timeout left. First down from the 25. The 49ers trail by one. Bears show some blitz. The bird drops back to throw. Almost intercepted by a lunging Terry Smith. It looked like the Bears were outside, but there was no penalty call. And that the bird cannot the bird he's upset about. He can't believe it. Yeah, I can't either. Looked like Tom Hicks might have jumped offside, but no flag. About 50 seconds to play. That's a guess. Scoreboard clock still inoperative. One more completion, and the 49ers are in great shape for a field goal. Right now, if they don't gain any more yards, it would be about a 42-yard attempt by Worsham. That's Stuman in motion. He made the great catch a moment ago. Over the middle. Intercepted by Doug Clark. And the Bears can now run out the clock. Oh, a little fisticuffs down on the field as Doug Plank comes up with a great interception. It was intended for McAfee. The Bears put the blitz on, which caused that. They put the blitz on, put the pressure on DeBerg, who has played a great game. That time he had to throw it a little bit out of desperation. Here comes Campbell, 59. Here comes Muckenstern. And McAfee looked back, but the ball was behind him. And fence, I should say, Plank, with the great hands, made the interception. The Bears have stopped San Francisco. Johnny, unless I missed something, it looked like McAfee was breaking open on this play, and if DeBerg had been on target, it might have been six. Well, he was in between the two defenders there and has certainly had a shot at it, but he didn't expect the pass to come that quickly, and he was forced to throw it. DeBerg was forced to throw it sooner than he wanted, and that was it. He was rushed. He had to throw it sooner than he wanted. As you look at Bill Wash, who's got to be very dejected. And across the way on the Bears sideline, Neil Armstrong, who dropped a heartbreaker a week ago at Minnesota, knows the feeling. Well, that's probably three years onto the life of Bill Walsh right there. I mean, it's a, a tough one. As Neil Armstrong is buoyed up, his chin up, and he's happy, and he's saying, we got him. We'd like to thank he our looks spotter like you can't today. believe it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Johnny. Our spotter today was Bob Coffey. And Ken Flower Jr. handled our stats very ably. About 40 seconds remaining in the game. Bears have two timeouts left, which they're not interested in using. San Francisco has one, and the 49ers have just expended that. Bill Walsh knows that the situation is all but hopeless. Well, it's a great victory for the Chicago Bears. They held off San Francisco when they had to with the key interception. For Bill Walsh, I'd say that he really has nothing to be ashamed of. He's working towards building a defensive team. He's already built the offense. That offense moved up and down the field at will, and they've been doing it all year. So there's been a lot of progress here in San Francisco. For the Bears, it might have kept them alive for a while. We'll see what happens. Tampa Bay won today. Tampa Bay is 7-2. and two. The Bears are still three games out, but they're now tied with the Minnesota Vikings for second place, and it may give them a new life to win a game like this. You go through something like they went last week and then to have it turn completely around, it's got to be a real boon to the Chicago Bear team as Mike Phipps comes back in, and I don't think they're going to pass. Walter Payton gained 162 yards today on 23 carries and reached 1,000 yards for the season, scored three Bear touchdowns. Phipps will just fall on it again. He does, and that might have been the last play of the game. 
Steve DeBerg threw for three touchdowns for San Francisco, one to Hofer, two to Solomon. Ray Wershing kicked a pair of field goals, and then, in the final minute and a half, this man, Mike Phipps, who had not enjoyed a good afternoon, on a fourth and nine play, found James Scott behind everybody for 49 yards and the winning touchdown. Bob Thomas's conversion made it 28-27 Chicago, and that's going to be the final score. And you got to chalk one up for Buddy Ryan, the Bear defensive coordinator. He called the blitz in that situation, brought him in, took the chance. I guess he figured that he wasn't going to be able to cover him downfield, forced the bird into a mistake, and won the ball game for Chicago. There's the gun at Candlestick. The Doug Plank interception preserved the victory. There's a smiling Neil Armstrong. Talking it over with referee Jerry Seaman as they leave the field. The Bears are four and five on the season. San Francisco one and eight, but the 49ers are a whole lot better than that one and eight might indicate, Johnny. Yes, when you're playing in the NFL with 13 out of your 22 starters, there's quite a picture. There's O.J. Simpson and Walter Payton. But when you're playing with 13 free agents on your football team, you have some rebuilding to do, especially on defense, but they did great. This is Bob Costas for Johnny Morris saying goodbye from Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Next week on the Sports Spectacular, the boxing debut of former Dallas Cowboy and Tutal Jones in the World Series of Poker. That's next Saturday on the CBS.